Okay, third time lucky. Let's see if we can get this going right. So sorry about this, guys. In the chat here. What the fuck? <laughs> sorry, that was me. Sorry. <laughs> what was that for? I know that's, I know that's my modeling workbench theme song. Right? Like, but I mean, like that's a bit. You begged us to let you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was like almost sort of like you know I, i'll do the editing now i'll take over. no i am um, i was trying to get the live stream to play like in the background and it was on loud and it just started playing there. blimey sorry. sorry yeah okay hopefully yeah it's not yeah the stream's now working now here so that's obviously fine i can hear you guys now at my end that's fantastic. So, Is anybody actually chatting? I can't see no. Uh, no, chat's not, no, chat's not activated yet here. I think everybody's just transferring over from the link yeah. previous to the new one. So, uh, just get just uh, the AC stuff. Uh, yes, it's all working. I we're going back to the old hangout thing here. I'll tell you, I'll explain everything in just a wee second here. Just uh, get I'll ourselves. Just, I'll just say one so. thing first. Oh, okay, Gavin, you take the. Uh, thing go, go, <laughs> if you guys don't know about this, it's uh, Gavin did a video on Twitter some time ago and uh, tells got his new Percy out there and it's just mimicked the Percy thing using the thing gets voice. It's been stuck in my thing. head all week. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly has. So, um, okay, try it again. I, uh, welcome, everybody, again. Third time I. Third time lucky to model this corner. Uh, I know, I know, it's terrible. Uh, tonight, uh, I'll I'll change the title again. I'll change the title once we finish the stream here. But um, oh, what was I going to say? Yeah, uh, we were gonna we were gonna have the stream was meant to be starting half an hour ago, but uh, there were some issues with the software that we were using. Um, basically, what it was is that uh, when when we do these streams on Google Hangouts, there's an issue where Every time when somebody's talking, there's you know the, the camera just jumps over to whoever that's talking, and then when somebody else is giving like a compliment or something about what it is they're they're working on here, the camera jumps back to them. But it's meant to be fixing, it's meant to be fixing on the other person. If you get what I mean, so um, to try and solve this problem here, I downloaded a software OBS to try and see if we can actually incorporate um, our Skype calls. Like you know, uh, we put like a, a made up a Skype group chat. And we imported all. The, I imported the videos onto the on this little setup here, which you saw in the wee preview thing. Which I'll I'll pr I'll pretty much keep it. I might keep it on for a while, but then you know, as I saw, like you know, the echo. There was quite a lot of echoes on that there that uh, seemed to be coming out of here. I don't know what could have caused it here. I have no idea what what uh, caused the issues, but um, but yeah, there was a lot of echo coming from some somehow from this whole thing. So. Uh, I have to look. I have to look into it again and try and see if I can get it fixed. And if I can get it fixed here, then we'll go back to the business here. But uh, we'll just have to deal. With, we'll just have to deal with Google Hangouts for now. So yeah. So I had a, I've already had my rant. So uh, uh, yeah. If we just take a bit more um, direction, so like if somebody's modeling, just request a camera more for somebody. That's pretty much yeah. Because I mean, I've only the problem is because I I'm the only one who controls the the camera you know, the the selective cameras on Hangouts. So you know, that's that'll probably be something we we'll have to make a rule of in uh, in the stream. Uh, by the way, Tom uh, Tom F, your uh, camera's not on. I know, and I don't know why. Okay, we'll still on. We have to me... Yeah, we're live now. Yeah, because I'm not getting a notification to see the chat or anything. Uh, you're in the in, using the right link here at all. I'm in the um. We usually no, normally I get like a notification on my uh, but it's I'll hang on a second. You get it working now, yeah? No, no, no. It's fine. I'll just um. If you got if there any, any questions, just um. Yeah. Stream off for me. I'll yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, there we go. See your workbench tonight, Tom. Yeah, that's how I, I closed another tab down, and for some reason it wasn't connected with this conversation, but it, it knocked the camera off. So. Right, okay. I'm going to close my other little icon down from the other Hangout thing, because I have to do that to sit again to get on. Yeah, that should probably work for you now. Okay, so... Um, sorry, I'm just still a wee bit ticked off now about this whole software thing. So, Shall I start with my plan? 
Yeah, I bet, I bet, sorry, I should probably just redo the introductions again here. So first of all, um, yeah, uh, welcome everybody to Modeler's Corner. Uh, third time lucky, as I probably might have to recall this thing again. Um, yeah, it just we're just uh, doing another live stream here for you guys to do the next installment of Modeler's Corner. Me, Tom, and Gav are back again with uh, a little our special guest, Mr. Thomas Foster, otherwise known as Dr. Tank Engine in the old YouTube days. Hello. So Tom is a... Uh, a bit of a railway model. He's been uh, doing. He's, he's most of his profession now is doing uh, local weathering. Is that correct? That is correct, indeed. Yes, Tom Foster weathering. Yeah. So he's so he's got a wee bit of a business now, yeah, weathering up your locomotives. So if you want a locomotive that needs to be weathered, he's the man to call. And I've seen his work before, and it's absolutely so stunning here that it's even being featured in a magazine, British Railway Modelling. Am I correct? Um, railway Modeler, actually. Railway Modeler? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done a few articles for Railway Modeler, and I've got another one planned on 16-ton mineral wagons in due course. That's cool. Pretty cool indeed. Okay, so as uh, as everybody knows here, who've, who's tuned into Modeler's Corner in the past here, you will have known that, you know, uh, each of us, the, the whole rule of Modeler's Corner is that it's a space of social gathering of uh, just a group of friends at there, and we t spend the next two hours which uh, we'll now have to make it, uh, and we'll probably stop the two hours now and finish maybe about, I don't know, half ten uh, tonight. And we'll work on a little project that we, you know, that we want to get working on. So uh, I'll start off, I'll leave mine to the last here. Uh, so we'll start off with you, Gav. What are okay. you working on? Uh, well, this Percy B1 Audrey Star, it's not moved on since the last set of videos. This one has, um, I'm not going to say what I've done, you can just have a look. I'm probably going to just paint the inside of that for now. I don't want to do the number six because I'm going to get make some transfers up. We're not there yet. I could possibly do the border bands and the handrails. Might do, might not. And then one thing I'll show you real quick. I made some shrouds. Awesome. Simple as that. So you've got a packet of things to close the gap. Pop them over. They want shapeways as well. But what I'm thinking of doing is, um, not yet, but in a minute or five, I'm going to show you a load of wagon kits. And you in the chat, tell me which one to build because... I need a contingency plan, so I'm going to let you choose for me. Yay! Pretty cool. Tom Biddle, what are you working on tonight? I've got a few things to do. I've got a few logos to fix. Um, got to fix the um, one of the pipes on my E1 here. Uh huh. And I've got this buffer came off my Dapple 08, just completely out of the blue. And I've had a few comments on the Facebook, on the YouTube, I'm mean, sorry, on the uh, O Gauge Facebook group saying what you can do to try and fix it. I've never met how it sprung again. But the majority of what I was going to try and do was um, try and get Thomas's chassis properly fixed because, um, well, basically, the wheels I used, I'm not sure who manufactured them, but when you're doing a, uh, a working chassis, usually you have one side of, one side of wheels are in, have insulation mm -hmm. on the inside rim. And the other is just plain built important. But for this kit, um, the wheel, the insulation is on the axle. So what, what I have to try and do is make sure that the chassis don't. Sorry. Basically, what's quite important okay. for this is that the, the chassis does not touch the wheels, otherwise you get a short. And what Gav suggested me do instead of using the spacers, which are these things here, they go in between the chassis. Instead of using the nickel silver ones, use cupboard. Uh -huh. So once I've cut the appropriate shapes out. I, I plan to file out the, the centerpiece so that it doesn't get connect with the um, with the nut and bolt that attaches the chassis together, and hopefully, uh, running. Yeah, about time. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully, we'll see it running at the end of the stream then. Maybe, but the uh, me, I'm not going to do this, the coupling rod, but the wheels are all um, all painted, mm -hmm. all that. So. Yeah, and Thomas Foster, what are you working on tonight? I've uh, got a few things to uh, to do. Uh, I'm going to start with making up some etch screw link couplings uh, for uh, for my Oliver model, which I'll show you next. I'm going to do some more work on that. So we've got screw links to make up. Uh, I've got the soldering iron on, uh, and then uh, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of T cut work on my um, 14XX, which is going to Oliver. I don't know if I can see that in the chat, just uh, there. Um, that side's had tea cut on to take off the factory weathering because it's just a horrible gunk that's been sprayed on. Uh, and so I need to do the other side on that. Uh, further detailing work on my uh, 5741, otherwise known as uh, uh, number eight in the, the Northwestern Railway, Duck. Uh, it's been painted, new transfers, um, 
some detailing parts, the handrails have been done, uh, and the buffers and some detailing at the back with tool stuff. Uh, and if we've got time as well, um, my Boco model, which has also had T cut on it, um, that's going to get his, uh, his numbers on, but we might not get around to that. Too well, we'll see. We'll see how we get on with the with the stream there. So, uh, this also, I just want to point out as well here, uh, for those who are wondering what was the, what was with the original title for the stream um, in regards to T cut, that's actually uh, that's actually just a, you know reference to Tom's method of removing factory weathering on ready to run models. So we were thinking off earlier on here what to call the stream, and we were like coming up with all these different types of T cut related puns. And uh, at starting first, day, it was um, what was it? Uh, the last the summer tea cut I came up with. Um, then what was it? Tom Biddle said uh, tea cut a uh, story short. I think it was. I think that was the one, the, the one we chose. I think. I also thing. said um, I'm a little tea cut short and stout. I did like. That. I did like that. That was very good. Yeah, but we were running. We were, we were kind of running out, running out of time, like you now before the stream started. Um, so it's just like you know, we'll we'll just have to use the. T cut along T cut a long story short. So T cut and the bank and the dirty shit is gone. <laughs> so anyway, uh, also uh, from my end here, I'm gonna be working on another item for Brass Engines. Now um during the course of the of the preparation for this film here is that uh, I've been keeping all most of all the uh, the rolling stock and locomotives quiet. So you, you you will see me working on a few items that will feature in the background of branch engines or maybe on certain areas. But uh, this one's going to be important for the plot here because today I'm going to be working on the uh, milk van as seen in Daisy. So this is a laser cut kit from uh, diagram3d.com and they do quite a lot of nice uh, laser cut models. And they actually have the four wheel milk van. So if you want to get this kit, it's uh, on this on that website. So it's uh, diagram3d.com. Kit's about fourteen pounds. It doesn't come with a chassis, unfortunately, and buffers, so you have to buy that separately. So, but the chassis I'm going to be using here is this uh, Parkside Dundas uh, ten foot um, wagon chassis. So, we're going to be using that there. So, um, and yeah, and also if I if I get that finished uh, early in, uh, as well, Gavin's given me a uh, commission to do, which is he wants some Farquhar rolling stock made up. So he's asked me to make up. Um, three of these three plank wagons and well make, make up the body works for it here because he's, he's going to make the chassis himself and do them up to look like these here which is a, which is my revenue g style farquhar quarry branch wagons so yeah that's me and uh yeah that's us uh, that's what we're going to do for our build so let us begin and also, sorry, also one thing I always keep forgetting here is uh, it's most importantly when you're working on when you're taking part in modelers car, it's always important to have beverages with you. So you must have food to keep you nourished and uh, drink to keep you quenched. So um, I've got myself some Jaffa cakes just to keep myself sorted out. And Full a moon. half moon. Totally clips. Well, yes. I, I pretty much ate all mine whilst waiting for the stream to start working. So really, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've quite drank my tea. I don't know if you saw earlier, but I actually, um, it was on shot. I actually chopped it up. Tea cut, you see. I saw, yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw it there. Yeah, yeah. tea cut. There we go. I just did it up quiet, up, you know, I didn't say literally anything. tea cut. That's pretty cool. I've got, I've got these um lovely uh, frozen chocolate fudge brownie bit bites. Oh, nice. And they're only seventy two pence when I bought them. Oh, that's pretty cool. Tom Foster, what you got for your nourishment? Just a diet coke. A diet coke. Right. Nourishment, it's wank. <laughs> and of course, like you know, I've got my I've got my traditional cider with me. With this is this oh, time yeah. it's mango. This time it's mango and raspberry flavor, so it's quite nice. It's actually my favorite. I am a cider drinker. I drink cider. <laughs> God, I'm gonna ask the chat. Bit of wurzels, bit of wurzels, eh? Mm. So, yeah, what are you saying? Uh, I can finish the camera. I'm gonna ask the chat which kit to build. Yep, yeah, you go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, you go ask. Uh, I'm I'm back in a sec here. Just. Tom, that song, that song you just sang reminded me of the Mighty Bush. Mighty Bush, that's a blast from the uh, the yeah. naughty, isn't it? Got the camera? Okay. But mouse cat, he chases his himself. Right, hang on a sec. All right, to everybody oh. watching, cat, I'm going to be building a wagon kit for the time being, apart from maybe a bit of painting on purses. So you tell me which one you'd rather build, because I really don't mind. That one. Right. 
you've got 10 ton meat wagon from Dapple or Dapple, however you want to pronounce that. Okay, Cambrian wagons, C84 Midland Railway, uh, 10 ton van. Uh, what's your one? Parkside Dundas horse box, Great Western style. A pipe wagon, Ooh. 12 ton BR1. Oh, this Coopercraft Iron Mink. So, out of them ones, let me know which one. Okay, crack on with it. Right, so hello, Andrew Rose Cole. Sorry about that. Hello, Max Hobbies Productions. Hello, Patrick. And hello, the famous Hector. Hello, Ben Hall. Oh, it's Ben in the chat. Hello, Ben. We're here at working. Is what a Tracy Lux, or I can't pronounce it. Or Atrix Lux. You're probably laughing at me right now. <laughs> David Gurney was in the stream. Uh, I've lost something into the carpet black hole. Oh no, what have you sacrificed to the carpet gods? And it was uh, it's, it's two uh, layers of, um, of a coupling hook and you laminate them together. But you know what? The carpet gods have shined on me and I just found it. So oh, good on you. The carpet gods have shined on me. <laughs> in case anybody doesn't know, it's actually the carpet gods is like a, it's a bit of a funny trend between modelers. If you lost something in the carpet, it's lost forever. We just call it just a sacrifice to the carpet gods. But not today. Not today. You will not take my coupling. David so, Gurney back. Oh. Hello. David Gurney back. David yeah. Gurney back. No yeah, more cheese. Any... I only said it once, though. Not 16 min million times. No more cheese, you mother. <laughs> like cheese? Oh, it smells a bit. No more cheese. Oh, dear. Alan Partridge references for anybody who's not aware. <laughs> yeah, great... Give me a little series, you peep. <laughs> partridge amongst the pigeons well what's that well, i don't know it's just a word <laughs> oh, sorry you gotta access to dixons i'm gonna just answer some have a release a second version of the percy kit yeah the v2 is up with four different combinations, basically. Yeah, have a look on YouTube and uh -huh. YouTube my, my, and, uh, <laughs> my, my um, I, can I just say I've just ordered from uh, from uh, Sparkshot Creative, uh, yeah, because I'll do them directly as well for cheaper. So if, if you this is like the body shell, if you order this directly from me, it's 34 89 plus postage. Obviously, I'll have a detail, but it's with it instead of shape waste price, which is over 60 quid a job. So big saving. And mine's, mine's going to be on its way next week, is that right? Oh, awkward sign. Oh, yeah, I'm posting it um, for the Monday, Tuesday. So, lovely, lovely jubbly. Yeah, so there's a card just pulled out of side here. Didn't you post a picture of it on your, on your Twitter, Tom? Uh, yeah, actually, it was it was Gav's uh, picture, which he kind of let me share. Um, but, yeah, my first 3D printed body. Um, <coughs> looking forward to it. Ah. So basically, you lied on your stream because you said you I thought you had it. <laughs> what? Sorry, naughty Tom. I said what? I you said shouldn't what? tell because you um, you, I got the impression you already had it. And Strange. It's actually no, I, I never stated anything. I just you know that if you inferred. You know. Naughty Tom. Sorry, what have I missed? I didn't lie. I didn't say you lied. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I did, I did actually, yeah, sorry. That's a strong word. You call me a liar, Tom. I'm oh, sorry. And I've messed up the laminations on those cups. I'll do some more. How's that word today? And I heard a mum call her child a liar. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, harsh. Yeah, but she's only like, what, five, six? Well, we've all seen the um, the Wilbur Tawdry video. That's harsh. You know, with the um, the boy who was touching the layout. And he really got smacked. Well, that's what that's what happened back then. Like, I mean, that's what modelers had to be, had to do, like back then, to stop kids from poking about on their layouts. Take yeah. it out. Get your finger out. Go to the back, please. <laughs> Further back, please. It's impossible to operate. Well, be fair, that, that does still happen. Like, I mean, my train club, our layout, we we still get the odd kid put his hand on the track, and we and the parents do say he's still doing that, and they just don't listen. 
Well, in fairness, if they put their hand on the track, <laughs> they'll get a nice shock. So that'll be enough to uh, deter them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not playing trains anymore. I'm doing this. I've had two votes. Nobody else has said anything. So. Right, so you're doing you're doing the horse box, aren't you? Yeah, I'm doing the horse box. Okay, I'm gonna have a have a go at this. Straight thing. into North North. I'm not fucking about. I'm so, um, this one. This, this is not a. Uh, I mean, this is kind of. You could say Modellers Corner is very much like in real life because there are Modellers Club where the idea of the club is that you just basically sit, chat, and then make what you're, what you're making. But in our case, we're doing it because we're, we're not in the same place. Yeah. yeah I'm from Reading. Um, Gareth in uh, Nunnington. You're in Ireland. Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. And uh, John, you're up north. You're up north. And, uh, I've, yeah. um, I've lost a coupling again to the the carpet black hole, and it's, it's it's not it's. I've had my chance today. It's not letting me have it back because. Uh, oh, it is! I found it. <laughs> Goodness me! Do you know what? I think I should probably just change the uh, the 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 title of this video to uh, "Modeler's Quarter and the Sacrifices to the Carpet Gods." Yeah. That's just one god. It's a carpet god, isn't it? Oh, carpet god. Well, okay, well, how do we know? How it can be, more, it can be more than one god because I mean, there's like because I mean, it's you know, more than one people have carpets. Yeah, I've got carpet here, so you know, how about carpet godry? Oh, oh, oh worms. You see, your carpet's got worms. <laughs> well, have you, have you really, Mike? No. Too much information there, please. <laughs> no, I haven't. No, no. I can be cut in half. Two worms. No. Oh dear. No. Right. Okay. Right. That's that is Oliver's couplings um, done. Moving on to the shackles. I'll be honest though. Uh, in all fairness though, I did not actually um, know that Davey was actually going to come along to the stream. You know, in the chat, like I know, I didn't know, I didn't know, he, I didn't know he watches these things. I think I invited him. I mean, I'm talking about it. Well, I mean, Davy has a model railway. Like you know, if he wants to, uh, <laughs> worm is the model's name. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah, if da if Davy wants to come along to one of these streams, like you know, you know, Davy, you're more than happy to. Like, just give us give us a shout here, and I'll uh, I'll add you to the uh, to the group. What my son? What my son? Right, it means one of us is gonna have to go. Well. Well, you well, it's just you know. <laughs> see, you see, the thing is, the problem, the thing is that with Modelers Corner here, we we have a it, there needs to be like a limit as to about, about how many people we can have on the stream. So I think like the maximum we had at one time was five. Um, yeah. But uh, it was uh, yeah, it kind of got a wee bit out of control. It was trying to know exactly who who was saying who Carn was saying what carnage. Yeah, so it just kind of limited down to four. So it'd be like you know three regulars, um, you know me, Tom, and Gav, and you just you want me to focus on the instructions here? No. Um, if you want, I've got <clears throat> it's a bit more complex than initially thought, so I've got a bit to read. But uh, sorry about for the crease noise. I just can't really much about it. You think I've, I've actually got my instruction thing? It's like it's like um, I've got pictures, but there's a load of text on it. Read it really initially. I just I just love these instructions here on my end here because I've got a book here I've actually got a book here for a small kit here half like two parts of it two bits of it here are made are actually laser cut MDF here whilst the other bits here are laser cut bits of card so that's including the main sides of the model here so I was like how can I how, how's this going to be very strong here so I have to be very careful with this model model railway kits are notoriously known for having well in the past the bad instructions um, yeah uh, there's some there's some Awful. There was a there was a, a company in the, I think in the sixties or seventies, and uh, I can't remember the name of it. But on the box, it, he, he, the guy even used to put El Crapo on the box. El, El Crapo. Um, now I'm not saying this is a bad kick. London Road models are very good. I think Gab, you've built some London Road model stuff, haven't you? Before? Nope. Have you? No, the only no, thing no. I've built is is some of the gearboxes, uh, simple motor mounts, but they're they're pretty good. That's okay. what I built. No, I mean they're very. Good, but there is something in the instructions. I think on the LNER K2, and it says, uh, it says, if so and so doesn't go together, as we say here, worry. Wow, wow, wow. That's... That's... I think the southeastern final. Oh, sorry, um, 
uh, the famous Hector. I'm really, I'm not really a fan of Thomas Comes to Breakfast, mainly because the back controller is a kind of close brackets to Thomas at the end for something he, he had no control of. That's very true. Yeah, actually, you know what? I never thought of that. If you take out of the fact that Thomas is boasting, blah blah blah, about all this, <laughs> yeah, it's actually no fault of his. Yeah. Yeah, and all, all I just basically was the cleaner's fault. So it takes it back to my idea of Thomas being a ventriloquist doll, and the fact control just blaming him for not the not the drivers. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember the old um, SF audio? I don't know if it was um, Christopher Burrell who did it. Chris Burrell, where he had uh, well, he did Thomas comes. To, uh, he he did Thomas comes to breakfast, and it had um, Ryan playing Thomas. Oh yeah, and uh, it said when Thomas is boasting, like you know, he can go out on his own here. Thomas, uh, Percy, and Toby says, says like you know, uh, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't go out on your own not until series, not until series eight. Oh yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, the engines don't have any drivers. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, to, Mac, to, to replying to Max's hobby productions, is the LNER K two the same thing as the Furnace Rover K two? Uh, no, 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 it's not. Um, the it's LNER, different. the LNER K two was a Gresley build for the Great Northern Railway, which Mobile, then was later it? Inherit, inherited by um, the LNER, and then eventually into beer. It's just one of those things where different companies have the same name. Uh, locus in incidentally uh the the lne rk2 is a two six it's the mogul it's a two six zone uh, i remember that i do remember that redub quite enough it's um yeah there's quite there's quite a few old redubs i do remember quite a lot when, when thomas crashes into the um into the house he's like uh, uh he says, well he says yeah, your, he says your wife was ugly as hell Woo! <laughs> <laughs> whatever you're singing is shock is not there now <laughs> oh, because yeah, basically the, the running joke in that story is basically Thomas the driver's a liar. You know he. Yeah. Uh, oh well, that's a bit like me, Tom. That's what you were calling me. Oh, anyway. sorry, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Was a bit, a bit, a bit, <laughs> it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a joke. I went a bit too far. Sorry, I take that back. Mm -hmm. Sorry, right, you can pay me later. Hey, <laughs> you played <that> one. <laughs> Um, just if anyone's interested, so these couplings are making up. Um, so I've got me. Oh, let's see if we can do this. I've got me the coupling. If you can see that there, that's the coupling hook. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to see if it's. Viewable. Question for Michael: What's it like writing for the show itself? From Brendan Polly. Um, yeah, it is quite enjoyable to do actually, um, but it's also a challenge as well because you have to work on new terms or new. Um, like the, yes, you, yes, you're writing for uh, two different audiences, really. Uh, you're writing for the older fans. You're you're, you're writing, well, basically, you're mainly writing for the younger fans, but also at the same time, you're writing for the older fans as well, because they'll be looking out for some certain stuff. There, but, um, but yeah, I, I'm still shocked to this day. I'm writing for, I'm working for the show, um, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it nonetheless. Like you know, I just I, every time I'm asked to like you know write a story, I'm filled with happiness i just love it but um but yeah it's it's good fun Jesus Christ, Gav. Yeah. you know the idea we had where we um you know if you um make the size you want the copper pad and then take off the excess copper so that surrounds the nut well it's actually a lot harder to remove the, that than it is to cut it in half, I mean, to, to, to cut it. I'm not sure what it means, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm really like it's really it's really a struggle just to kind of shit, like cut away. I'm using my trusty craft knife here to cut away the excess um, copper. I'll just use a file cutter. Yeah? I mean, I use the edge of file. I have, right? I have. It's, it's it's like it doesn't want to come off, Gav. <laughs> well, it's meant I just got a file a bit longer than you would for plastic. It's not hard though. No, Depends how good your file is. We've got a shitty file. Yeah, you're going to be there a while. Well, guys, if you're using craft knives, be very, very, very careful. The worst I've done is this this thumb here. This thumb right here. I once cut it cut it upwards. Oh. And a nice line here. And then I cut it sideways. Okay. So now that that is very tender when I grab things. Ow. I need some new mech. And that was eight years ago. The whole thing is craft nice, but if you're not, if you just knock about with them, don't buy them. 
I remember one time when I when I was starting railway modeling or model railways, my granddad made me a super quick platform kit, but he but the problem was that he actually made up the full kit, like you know, he he was meant to have like a bit open so we could actually put it together put, position it or put it in between my uh mainline station building kits that I also got. But he didn't do that though, so um but I had to, I had to get his standing knife. He had to, he had to cut part of the kit away, but the kit, but the card was so tough to get through, and uh, he, he was in like the sore position. So hang on, I'll put, I'll put my camera on here. So he was he was cutting it like um, like this here. If you know what I mean, he had, the, he had the knife underneath here, big blade there, and he had his thumb right there, and so he was cutting it all the way through there. And next minute, the, the knife slipped and went like right through the card. And uh, it just sliced his whole thumb open. And I was like, "Oh God!" He was like cursing. He was like cursing his body. He was like, "It was, it was like, ah, oh, yep." Right there, you go. There's your station open. There your platform's open. Ah, bugger. So once, once we, once we, look, once we attended to his thumb there, then we we finished on getting the uh, um, yeah, got the plan, got the station all cleared there. I'm in trouble getting this to stick. Might just might as well be painting the thing with frigging water. I don't know we have this problem. Will you behave? Right. Um, okay. good. Now I'm making the shackles, and I've done the Tommy bars, so and then we'll put them together, and we should have some nice screw link cut thing. Are they called Tommy bars because of it's Tom Foster, or Tommy bars because that's what they don't really do? Uh, yeah, they were named after me. Yeah, that's right. right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I have a uh, have uh, worked on real couplings uh, when I used to volunteer on the North York Moors and the Wensleydale Railway. Um, Wensleydale. Wensleydale, Graham. <laughs> right, that's the one. Uh, Not from Wensleydale. He's funny. Well, it's, it's, well, yeah. There was actually there was actually I remember one time here Peter Sass actually did say Wensleydale and was in last of the single line without without a slightest bit of reference to Wallace and Gromit like. He just says like he just said, he just tried to offer like uh, some cheese nut there, and he's like it's Wednesday Dale, and Compo's like I don't care if it's Thursday Dale, I'm not having it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, what we're at it? Can we? Can you tell us a bit of history? I mean, because obviously we know we, we we've learned obviously that you work with people on the lines of um, I think of Tony Wright, and uh -huh. if anyone doesn't, anyone doesn't know, Tony Wright is um, he does a series of DVDs, and he is also a writer, a modeler. And a and a writer for the um, what's he what's he writes for? British Railway. He used to yeah, British Railway modeling. He used to be an assistant editor. And he was also um, he's also made his own series of DVDs called Right Track. And funny enough, it's the same DVD series where I've learned to build and also uh, construct chassis from. Which I'm still trying to I'm trying to learn. But yeah, you obviously you I mean you know him. You actually know him. Yeah, we're well, yeah we're good friends. Um, it, it's about. Well, five six years ago, I was lucky to go down with. I, I used to operate the um, someone who go to model exhibitions may have seen the layout of Grantham, and uh, uh, we were invited down to operate. And then Tony had seen. Uh, we all brought some of our modelling along, and I brought some of my LNER Pacifics that I've weathered. And um, uh, Tony said to me, "He said, would you, you know, would you weather me some?" And I was like, well, "Yeah, sure." He said, "So, yeah." He said, "Well, we'll, we'll horse trade." So Tony's given me tuition on on building chassis and things, and and uh, and I, I've weathered stock for him, and uh, and yeah, and it sort of you know it went from there, and he's he given me a lot of help and advice, and um, yeah, and, uh, and I find these um, his right track DVDs I find are uh, uh, hilarious in, in yeah, a good way. Are. Like it, he's very he's very funny with stuff, and um, like if something goes, he'll say, "Don't do something like this," you know. Be, uh, he'll be, he'll be like, um, whatever you do, don't don't cut like that. How do I know? <sighs> because I did it myself. You know. Yeah, I do. Admit, I've always laughed at his, his DVDs. I've got the whole right track collection. I've watched them umpteen times. Um, yeah, and you can't get the attention now, a couple in a beast snowplow. I think that's brilliant. The only I, I, the only one the only ones I have is the uh, the first part of the scenery one, the locomotive uh, kit building one. Um, um, I think there was the start yourself a train set one as well, and I think there's also like do yourself ready to run models or something like that. There. Uh, yeah, he's did a detailing RTR one. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the one. Yeah, the kit building ones were the were the first ones and probably the most popular. Um, and yeah. you mentioned you mentioned Mike. You've got the um the one on 
um, uh, scenery. Yeah, it was a two-parter. The second part one is really hard to get because there was, so a, fault on, there was a fault on a lot of the DVDs. Um, yeah, that I didn't know about the fault, and I actually... I ended up buying the second part myself twice because mine kept fogging up it when he just started putting the ash into the... Well, I found that out, basically, that's what I'm saying. I had to buy the second one. I was okay the second time. Oh. I, 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 I really need to... I thought it was just a one-off. I didn't realise it was like a big problem. I thought you were going to say, Gav, that you bought the DVDs twice and they had the same problem. <laughs> no, I just didn't know it was a problem that was widespread. I thought it was just mine. Mm. Um, just to point maybe of interest to this, so this is the coupling I'm just making up at the moment. Um, of what I'm doing, uh, if you can see that quite well. So that's what I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solder. Now the big worry, obviously, with solder is. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Michael. Yes. You take control of the camera. Yep. For a time. Oh. Take the camera. Can't remember that. <laughs> Although um, I took the camera, I did control the camera for you there for a second. There. I was like, oh, you need to go no, soon. No, I was no. like, oh. Okay. Um, am I okay to continue? Proceed. Thank you. Um, so, yes, um, I'm, I need to solder this in place, but not solder so that the Tommy bar can't move around the, uh, I think it's a Duchess pin I'm using. So what I do is uh, I have some Vaseline here, uh, and Vaseline will act like a barrier to stop the solder going where I don't want it to. So essentially what I'm going to do is just a bit of, bit of Vaseline literally on the inside of the Tommy, uh, in between the shackle, just in there. So then I can apply solder from that side. It solders that nicely to the shackle, but the Tommy bar can still move. Now, some of you may think, goodness me, this looks fiddly. Uh, why, why? You can buy screw links already. Um, you can do. Uh, these are quite fine, but they're still usable for sort of, you know, using a coupling hook, which I like to hand uh, couple my stock with three links and things. Uh, but uh, they're from Mazza Kits, which you can get by the Scale 4 Society store. You don't have to be a member to order. But you get about seven pairs on a on an etch, I think it is. It might be more. It might be more, actually. But um, I think, no, it's about seven. Uh, and it's about four pounds. So it's it's very cost effective. So it requires a bit of modelling. But hey, that's where the fun lies. <laughs> Me personally, I'll just buy the Smiths ones and the ready-made and slightly over scale so they're easier to use the compatible dingums. Yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with that? But I, just one double check. Just one double check. Um, I was just doing some soaring. Did anyone hear anything? No. Oh, good. That's looking in the mic off. Just one double check if it's actually working. Okay. Silent soaring. Anyway, sorry. Back to, Gab, what, back to what you're doing. What am I doing? Yeah, what, what you were saying. Sorry, if I interrupted you. I was just saying, I'll, um, where is it? I'll just buy these. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a pack of those here as well. More expensive, but they're made up, and the fact that the slightly over scale suits me because it's not a deal breaker for me, and because I like to use Dingham uh, couplings, which are uh, they work. What's to call it? Automatic uncoupling. They have that delayed feature. You can use them with them, so you can, yeah, it's it's a bit yeah, it's just compatible. But the fact is, you don't have to build them up, so it just saves time. But that's why you pay more as well. Yeah. Horses for courses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, look, I, I agree. It's just. Um... I quite I, weirdly. Some he was uh, sorry. Um, AC stuff uh, says uh, making those cups and looks fiddly. Uh, it is a bit fiddly, um, but I quite I find it quite therapeutic actually. And um, I, they also do a lamp iron etch, which are very fine. I put I put etch lamp irons on my stock because um, I use uh, Model U lamps. I've got some here, um, which are you you make up. There's 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 one of them. Yeah. Um, and uh, you paint them and they're really to scale and they've got a nice lens in them. And I like to make them removable because I, I just, one of the things I pro probably got from Tony Wright, but I, I like to have the different lamp positions for different types of trains and I like it to be changeable. Oh, Again, cool. it's just a personal, it's a personal thing, um, but it's just one thing that I enjoy with the whole, you know, trying to make things sort of authentic. Yeah. I'll just pinch the camera briefly. Yeah. Hang on a sec. I, I just like to say, I, I use, um, I like to put, make my lamps removable as well. I just drill a hole in the bottom of it, bung some blue tech, and that was a Tony Wright trick as well. Anyway, with this hey. thing, um, it, the instructions basically, the first thing they say is to cut this glazing sheet into a certain size. Yeah. And then fix it in here, right? And then the other one. Well, what's the point in doing that when you're going to paint it? Because I like to spray this as primer. So I'm just, I mean, okay, you can mask them off, but. I don't bother. I tend to build everything first, paint it first, and then fit them in after. It might be a fiddle, but I'm sure I'll manage it. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what I do as well. Like you know, yeah, I just I just leave, leave leave the glazing till last. 
that's what I've, that's what I've always been doing since since past couple of years. Learned the hard way. Yeah, just just speed the whole thing up there. Oh. Right, so just to give you an idea where I'm at now here. Um, basically, I'm making up all the little small individual bits. So this is the that's the base of my milk van. Look how small it is. Is it out? You make it out of wood or plastic? It's it's all laser cut. It's laser, it's laser. The main base here is laser cut wood, and then all the rest of it here. This is all the main bits here. These are actually very, very, very fine woods, like the like wood cut to paper size. Oh yes, so, very, got... very fine. Actually. It's like, no, it's actually card actually. So I've actually got a couple of those um, laser cut O gauge um, like um, like I've got an engine shed, a few signals. What I was going to do with it was um, just build the body, and then uh, cover it in plastic paper. Plastic yeah. Paper. Just to think of getting in the right shape. Yeah. What's this here now? Oh, that's the roof. Um, so, yeah, back to um, I was going to ask Tom. I mean, for those who don't remember or do remember his um old YouTube channel, he used, yeah, to, yeah. He used to do a lot of um, mm. like a lot of videos on his layout with um, <laughs> was pre, I think it was like the of the during the, the British Rail days. Can you just tell, tell us a bit more about that? Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, it, it goes back a bit earlier than that. The original plan was that when I was a kid, my dad built me a layout that went from one end of my bedroom to the other. It went through my wardrobes and it was sort of my interpretation of Sodor. And then my dad always said that when we moved, we'd, we'd have a proper roundy round layout. And that was always what I planned. And, so here's uh, so here 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 here. yours went through your wardrobe. Went through my wardrobe. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll, That's I'll, awesome. I'll, I'll try and dig out some photos and I'll, I'll probably post, I'll post them on Twitter um, and I'll, you know, I'll share them with you guys. But um yeah, and then we moved, and then some of you may remember it. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was going to be roundy round. It was going to be so door, and it was sort of then, you know, not trying to, you know, not trying to sort of, you know, hero worship anybody here. But in fairness, uh, that's when I sort of first met met Gav and uh, on 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 Sif, and uh, I was really inspired by his railway series modelling, and I was thinking, yeah, wow. Really. <laughs> and then I met him, and I was like, oh my goodness, no. We've never uh, met. Joe, him. I knew you'd say that. Anyway, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm joking. Online, yeah. I'm jo I'm, yeah, I met him online, and that was enough. No, I'm joking. And uh, and actually, that really inspired me. And then that was the plan. And then actually, uh, I saw Simon Martin's British Railway series, and um, that sort of then enticed me into a real world sort of modelling. So the layout was sort of changed, and then it became um, became the setting for my uh, YouTube series back then called Northeastern Steam. Uh, and I did I mean, three episodes. I did three episodes of it. Um, and then sort of, I think the changes happened was that I'd sort of, I started buying some kit locos, kit built locos. Some of them remember I got a, a Thompson A23 of Edward Thompson, discovered that Hornby set track didn't like the curves and things. And I suppose that was my step towards sort of fine scale modeling. And then from there, I we, we sort of took part of um, the East Coat layout, as it was called, down. I did Lehman Road that some of you may remember, and yeah, remember um, and that was my engine shed layout. Trouble was, it was in my garage. It was very dusty. Stuff would stall. Uh, and then I went through a few other plans of going. I was going to do the East Coast Main Line, and then I sort of randomly took a turn about five years ago to sort of wanting to do North Wales. I love North Wales. I love Snowdonia, and I'd, I'd had a passing interest in the the Bala to um, Blanai Festiniog branch, and that's where Compressor started, and. Uh, I've sort of compressed sort of about finished. I was going to do an extension and a model Bala, but then I just realized that I, I, I'm not financially secure to do such a big layout like that. It's a lot of money and, you know, there's other things that need the money. So, so I've got compressor and I've got the stock for that and stuff to work on. I've actually got one of my, um, one of the pannier tanks that works on the line, which is a uh, 5774, which is here. Uh, and she, uh, she's had quite a bit of work actually. She's had, um, the top feed, I removed the top feed on there, carved it off, carved all the pipe work off, and then resprayed it. Uh, and yes. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really pleased with that. So, I really, like, I really like how bright the numbers are on the front smoke box door as well. Like, oh, yeah, now those, they're produced by Pacific Models. Uh, that's by Ian Wilson. Uh, he lives not far from um, Tony Wright. And he does Tony Wright's front number plates. And all the art, they're printed on really good paper. Um, I think they look better than etched plates. They, they, they look in four mil double o they look they look right and I, I really like them um so so yeah so i've got the compressor layout and then i've decided on the other end of a shed i'm sort of going back to my roots and i'm, I'm doing something railway series uh, the plan is 
just see how I still feel. If I'm still sort of enthusiastic about it in a, in probably a month or so, I might hopefully order my baseboards. And I'm I'm my modelling. Friend. I'm modelling thanks to sort of Gavin and Mike and, and Tom sort of you know inspiring me. I'm 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 going to do Tidmouth, the Tidmouth yards that you know Gav has researched into, which we believe are behind Tidmouth sheds, and the, the yep. and the little west. Uh, yeah, but the side. Little sheds is station. Did I say sheds? Yeah, yeah, the station. Oh, apologies. No, behind the station. Sorry. Um, the I, meant, I, I meant station. I meant station. But uh, yeah, they're behind the station, and the little western runs through yeah. there, and it's going to be Tidmouth Yards uh, in the 1960s period. And uh, you know, I, I drew a trap on up. Gav's done a little work on it and made it into put it into any rail, and it should be quite nice. And that's why I'm working on these, you know, Boko Oliver book sort of thing, and. Hmm. Yeah, it's just trying to recreate it, how it would have looked in the 1960s, and I just find it interesting. You've got you've got wagons coming over from British Railways. Soda has its own stock. They have to be organised, sorted, shunted. Um, that's what I'm really sort of excited about. So I'm sorry I'm so enthusiastic. But... Oh, no, that's all right. I do remember... Um... I'm going to change the subject again, but I, mean, I remember, obviously, from your... your I, do, I do remember from your YouTube videos and things. I remember... I think my favourite episode of yours was the one where it's... It was called, and I think it's still. I think it's still on your channel now. It's um, we never had the chance to say goodbye. Um, it might, it might be the video I did. I did, I did a one with Elgar's Nimrod variations, and it's. Um, I think that might be the one. It was a music video. Well, there was no, there was no, there was some sound effects, and I did it with. Uh, da, na, na, da, da, da. Oh, I love that. Let's see. Uh, that's. I think that's the Winston Churchill's funeral music. I think quite, it was quite, quite possibly. And um, I did this shot, and I'm still pleased with it today. I'd use the smoke generator and stuff, and then there's a shot of the engine shed, and it's when the music is the climax. And then as the music dies away, I faded the shot to change from being the engine sheds in steam days to almost being like ten years later, and the sheds have gone, and there's diesel buzzing by, and it's just a bit, you know, it's a bit weepy. Um, yeah. but I, I, yeah, I did three. I did three main episodes. Um, you know, with contributions I might add from uh, Mr. Davy. Um, as uh, as because uh, Gavin and I were were, were rewatching it re recently, and there was uh, MRH Loco and Ryan from. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's nice to look. There's some stuff in that I'm still really really proud of. Some of some of the shots I'm oh, still. Yes. Oh yeah. Now, uh, these, uh, these new tools have got the parallel closing pliers. Great for squash and bearing cups into plastic, because normally you either have to drill them out or solder them in, like melt them in. Uh, uh, can uh, demo? Say... Give a demo. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so... Um... I use um, solvent, Gav. I use a bit of... Um... Uh, it's because the hole's too small. But the hole's oh, too small, so you have to drill the hole out and ream it out a bit, or melt them in, but... Mm. We'll just line the bloody thing up. Hopefully, just repeat. Yeah, that I just um, I put a bit of solvent in there, which you know softens, softens it. the plastic, and then uh, push them in. But yeah, same bits. Oh, I'll borrow the uh, camera for a bit, Mike, just for yeah. a second. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um. So basically, what I've just been doing for the last um half an hour or so was I was making these things that are called spaces. I think they're called spaces, right? They're what they're what you connect. Um, Frame spaces. Frame, yeah, frame spaces. That's what you, yeah. it's what you use to connect the, the um the, these chassis plates together. I've had to use copper clad in hope that you know obviously hope of making a stronger joint, but also because my wheels are the instant the um insulations on the axles, it's important they don't they don't touch together. That way, hopefully, creates a, a, a continuous flow flowing cu current of uh, current. Sorry. So I just I just. Did we say current, crunch, crunch night. I thought you said, I thought you said crunch. <laughs> I thought I said the other words, C-U-N-N-N-N-N-N-N-N. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Whoa. No, no, there may be children watching. That, that escalated quickly, couldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Is the kids watching? Yes. Come closer. You're adopted. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me, it's Frank. Somebody, it was, it was um, a Howard. Somebody um, mentioned earlier in the chat was saying uh, "Very Old Engines" is the best book. Uh, it's what, honestly, I mean, that's a favourite of mine. I think um, it's probably one of my favourite of the um, of the Scarlari engines. Um, yeah, I've just got a question from Max Hobbies Productions for Gav. 
What yeah. if you could make a 100% accurate model of Percy from Percy Does the Thing 1 and 3? You need to get permission from Matt, who used to run the Scotsman Returns. <clears throat> uh, my yeah. question is, what are you banging on about? Don't get your mouth. Oh, right. Sorry, that's question. Sorry. <laughs> I have to translate that one for me. Let's get that. Just trying to make sure we didn't forget you guys. Not sure what it means. Well, to if me, this is, this is a model of Percy. Percy. It's my interpretation. Yeah, sorry. From, from from Percy does the thing one and three. You need to get permission from Matt, who used to run the Scotsman Returns. He does the thing. What's the thing? What's the well, thing? Percy Matt... does the thing. Is that a, is it a YouTube episode or something? Is it Percy does the thing? At the end of the day, it's interpretation. Oh, that uh, is that not? I don't think. No, I think. I think uh, Scotsman Returns is Percy. That's a whole different Percy altogether. That's just like his own. He's... I think it's, I think the reason why he's done this is because like, that was the only model he he'd used like whilst working on railworks or something. Great. Okay. Oh. Looking. Um. Uh, Percy's looking nice, uh, Gav. Ah, cheers. 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 Definitely coming on. Do 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 do. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? It, it's going to be like ten years time. You know, it's like these people who've been made famous by a character in TV, and they, yeah. they get a bit typecast, and they hate it being mentioned. It's just like Gav will be like, you know, professional. It'll be a professional job, maybe or something. You know, in TV production, and someone's just going to go do do, and he's going to go go away. No, but, I, I, I can I can actually imagine like one of us, like you know, like we're all, we're we're just like a bunch of old people, like in you know, an old folks' home, and just like. Just sitting there in our in our chairs, waiting for the reaper to come in. And what next? Minute, all of a sudden, one of us just goes, "Yes, yes." Can I can I just quickly say, Mike, was that you? Yeah. That sounded the spit of Gav. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. That was you know. These instructions are crap, by the way. What if someone <laughs> could help me? Just I'll be honest. Out. I'll be honest with you. Stuck now. I'll be honest with you. I, I just pretty much, I just pretty much this instructions just guess from it. Talking of cameras on you. Uh, yeah, it says there. Remove the V hanger A and the vacuum cylinder trunnion B. The one soul bar only. This soul bar shall go on the W side of the vehicle, right? Aye. Problem is, there's nothing on both this paper that does A or B. They're numbered, but there's no A or B. So what the are they banging on about? I Maybe can't it's it is it not on the mouldings? No, not that I can see. They've got the they've got a soul bar here, right? There's no A or B or nothing. That's obviously the V anger, but the vacuum yeah. cylinder trunnion, I ain't sure. I'm guessing it might be the little pip that's next to it, but I don't actually know. So mm. that's not very helpful, is it? Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry. Hold, to... hold on, Gav. Hold on, Gav. What? Um, um, remove the V hang. Um... Yeah, and the vacuum cylinder trunnion. From one soul bar only, so I'm presuming the trunnion might be the little pip things next to the V anger. Cool it, it, it will be one of those things where there's something on one side of it, one side of a soul bar, and it's not on the other. But the the, the casting does basically the two versions, so you have to remove. Yeah, yeah, I know, off. I know that. But it, what I'm getting at is, it doesn't. I don't know what the trunnion is, unless that's it. The trunnion of two. A little farty bit there. Ah. There's, there's no A or B on the on the paper. All the mouldings. Oh, I just want to ping it off and find out I've done the wrong thing. I just realised something, guys. What? All this time I've been um, trying to get the thing set up, I realised I've never actually made the gearbox for this thing. Well, you haven't, you haven't made the gearbox. I was going to ping it off. It. No. <clears throat> it's wrong, it's wrong. Tom. Right, coupling is going. The couplings are going together now, and we should just finish working. So what we do instead, I'm going to probably have to borrow the E1s here for this test. <laughs> right, I might actually. I think I wasn't actually going to mention this this stream. But I think I might mention it now. Just oh dear, I still might. Oh dear, what's doing? Oh dear. Right. Um, for those who, if anybody remembers last the last stream we did, where Tom Jensky was here, and and Luke, Luke Ryan, there was um, you may have noticed that I, I I kind of ended the stream a bit too quickly, like quite quickly. 
uh, in a sort of a rushed type fashion. Now, there was a reason for that there, and that was because... Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but um, but I, but I wasn't really all that well uh, during that whole stream. I, I, you wouldn't believe this here, but for, for the entire of of uh, the last stream, I was I was extremely ill. I was like so ill, and just literally, literally after I, I finished the stream, I had to quickly tell I had to quickly tell the guys said that like, guys I have to go right now here. It's something very something something. Something very catastrophic is coming on here, and I don't want to embarrass myself. So as soon as I clicked off the thing, I went in, went to the bathroom and just projectile Ooh, vomited. Everywhere. Just project, projectile <laughs> vomited everywhere. Because <laughs> because <laughs> basically what it was that I, I, I had a very bad I had a very bad migraine throughout the entire day, and it kind of affected me quite badly. So um, apologies to anybody who's having eating their dinner at this moment in time. What what nine o'clock at night? Well. Gav eats at funny times, doesn't he? Well, yeah, I suppose. But anyway, that's just Gav. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gav. Uh, love, love you really bad. Oh, no, I'm a bit of a weirdo. It's all right. I've been checking it. <laughs> 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 but yeah, but yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't all that well during the last stream here. So yeah. You, you'll you'll basically you'll basically see me like you know if you look at the last stage of uh, the last stream, you'll literally will see me like. Like you'll see my my hands out there, but my, my hands uh, just be going like you know, oh god, and maybe hear me sigh a wee bit here every now and again. That was literally me just trying to get over a huge pounding headache that was just constantly ripping my head apart. And uh, yeah, but, I didn't want, but but, uh, but I I didn't want I didn't want it to um, I didn't want to disappoint you guys. So you know, I had to stay strong for the entire stream. So yeah, dedicated. Yeah? That's dedication. Uh, I suppose. Record breakers. Anyone of our age remember record breakers? I don't remember watching record breakers though, but I was remember. I actually remember Chris Barry actually, actually first introduced me to Funhouse. Funhouse. Oh, it's a really crazy show. <laughs> Arnold, Arnold, Arnold. Matt, uh, Pat, Pat, Pat Sharp. Was he Pat Sharp? I think so. He, we always, we with always the mullet. Him. With the yeah. mullet. Yeah. The giant, the massive mullet. Do you have the go karts at the end? They used to like that. Oh, oh yeah, go karts. I love that. Fun house. Do you know what used to annoy me when I was young? There, I, I know people are going to dislike me now for actually saying this. I didn't actually quite like Fifty Fifty. What was Fifty Fifty? It was like some sort of a weird. I think I, I, I actually don't know. It was like all I know was like some game show used to be on the on CBBC. I never knew exactly what what was it all about. Oh, uh, British Gypsum 4, I know that name. It was Pat Sharp. Thank you, Ben. Pat Sharp. Okay, thanks, guys. Then um, remember Get Your Own Back with Dave yes. Benson Phillips. Yes, Dave Benson Phillips. He was, he, he was my... I used to love watching it when I was, when I was a kid. Gu oh, gunge. That was a... Oh. There was, I actually remember, there was like a children need thing there where, this, where Dave actually got gunge um, in that episode. Dave Benson Phillips. Can I um, get a quick... Uh, sorry, not... not um, just to double check. Um, pick up. Yes. Should I put them on both sides or just one side? If it's um, if it's a uh, bit axle. Is it a live? Is it a live chassis, Tom? It's gonna. Well, it's gonna be. Yeah. Because basically, basically, the insulator's on the axle. So I'm wondering, should I put? Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure which. Uh, you know, I'm going to need um, the pickups on both sides, really, aren't I? Or if if you've got if you've got one set of wheels that are insulated and the other side aren't insulated, then the you need pickups on the side that are insulated. Um, but you, oh, the, oh. The, the, the wheel your wheels if it's insulated, there should be a very thin, like a thin ring around the, one of the wheels where it's basically like a filler to stop it picking up. Um, okay. Because I've got it, I've got the insulation on the axle. So should I put it on both sides, or? Well, how do like find out? Do it on one side, and if it doesn't work, then do it on both. Um, oh, I hate this hobby. <laughs> do you know if you both you, are you both sets of wheels the same? Yeah. Basically, um, what I was planning on doing was because um, I'm I'm actually missing a third insulator. No, no, sorry, a third, a third um, pickup 
bit. So what I was going to do was just have the front, the front and rear wheel um, with pick our pickups, and then um, basically just get just get the power from there and have it. So the, the rear wheel, uh, the middle wheel connects to the motor. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, Mike, could I just have the cam uh, the camera for a second? Yep. So there we go. We've got two two screw link couplings uh, done. Okay. Uh, if I just show, can you see them dangling? They're they're on the hook. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then um, the plan is whether we do it tonight or not is they will eventually just pull pull the hooks out of Oliver and they'll go fit in the if it in his buffer beam and then he can be use um he can use screw link couplings. So. Yeah, that's one job done, and I'm about to move on to the tea cut of doom. The tea cut. Tea Everything cut. Stops tea, cut. tea with cut. Oh no, no, no! Garlic bread. Garlic bread. It's a future. It's a future. That. I actually, I actually do remember seeing there was actually. Um, I was in the supermarket one time, there and something there was like an offer on garlic bread there, and it just said, just said. It just says on the uh, on the advertisement screen. It just says garlic bread. It's the future. That's the future, son. Hey, I texted it. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the Phoenix. Sorry. Hey, Jerry, 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 get me some tap. When the Apologies. sun when the sun comes out this summer, Eugene, get me crisp and dry. Burn, burn. I go off playing sugar. Um, smell like a chip. So. So yeah, I'm, I'm now going on to this whole the whole teacup business. So yeah, um, essentially, as, as Mike kindly said, you know, I, I sort of weather. That's my that's my sort of thing. Um, I don't like factory weathering on models. I think it's generally bland and uh, it's yeah, crap. I don't like it. At all. <clears> it's one person um, there, brushy done. I went I went with this um, the the Hatton's 14XX. This is the one that's closest to Oliver's livery. Um, it, it, well, it is it is Oliver's livery. Oliver's livery is like a heritage livery. It's, a, it's an earlier Great Western livery. The downside for me came with that is he doesn't actually have a top feed, uh, but I've sourced one so I can fit one onto it. Um, so it was the closest thing. So I had I sometimes use Microsol, which is a, a decal decal softener, uh, to get factory weathering off. It wasn't working, so I went to use T Cut. Now T Cut works by uh, it sort of removes the top layer of paint. But gives a lovely sheen onto models. If I give an example, I don't know if I showed this before, I might have done an apologies if not. Here's my Boco, and that's got a nice sheen on it now because I've removed all the factory weathering of it. So the plan is um, that side's been done, that side has not. So I get a bit of tea cut on a cotton bud and just start working away with it. And what's nice is it leaves the dirt, there's the tea cut in there, it's a bit of residue. Yeah. yeah. And then you just start working away on the um, on the on the bodywork thus so. Um, you will start to see um, the muck come off first. Then you start to see bits of green paint come off. Don't worry about that. It's um, you know don't keep doing it because eventually you'll get down to plastic. You can work away at it quite nice, um, quite nicely. What then I do when I've finished is is go back with a cotton bud that's wet with water because what happens with tea cuts is it leaves like a powdery residue and you don't really want that and you just want a nook and cranny sort of thing. Uh, and then the final thing to do after that is some more detailing bits I need to do, change the sand, the toolboxes. Um, DJ Models, who produces patterns, who have just gone into liquidation. I have to say I'm not a big fan of the, the, the models and the drive systems on their, on their low coast. And they used a recess for putting their number plates in, which is a bit of a pain because I like to renumber things. This is going to be renumbered to 1436, which was Oliver's number. Uh, thankfully, the recess goes back so far that is flush. So I can just put uh, the replacement plates over the top. And that is the plan. Awesome. I've been having trouble with it, getting this going at the moment. <clears throat> well, is it, not, is it not rolling all right? No, it's not that. It came with, uh, I had this one coming P4 wheels, but I'm, obviously I'm a model P4 and not one. I just want to do this as a straight not not one, but obviously when I changed wheels, I had to go into a bag of wheels. A lot of them, the wheels are like slipping on the axle. That's why I've just been faffing around for a while. So I've got one plastic one with bigger flanges and one metal one, which does look great, but I can live with it as long as the bloody things work. Yeah. But the glue ain't set yet, so... But I don't know if I show you, it's, it was working a bit. It just needs a bit of a 
A tweak. Tweak, 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 tweak. So, yeah, I think we should be all right with that. Ooh, it's coming up now. So, oh, yeah, I might as well show my progress so far. That's that's as far as I've got there so far of mine. Let's have a look. So, <clears throat> basically, this kit here, you, you get like two layers of uh, these bits here. So, that's, so that's the first layer on. I need to put the second layer on. So that kind of gives like a double thickness here. So it's not all very, you know, very springy and very soft out there. So, um, but yeah, like I said earlier on here, I'll, I'll have to be very careful with this kit here because, you know, it's going to be appearing in brown Engines. engines. So, you know. Um, question oh. for you, Mike. Um, By the way. Um, what diagram, what diagram of, or what company is, is the milk? Uh, the kit, I mean, what... what um. Oh yeah, it's um, <clears throat> right for anybody who wants to buy this kit. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's the website is diagram model diagram three d dot com. You're looking for GW O four dash S O one. So that's the Great Western Railway Siphon O uh, one four wheeled version of the milk van four millimeter scale. So, oh, so it's uh, great. It's great, what, it's great Western in, in origin. Yes, yeah, great Western knowledge in there. So now, also a bit of a warning here: this doesn't come with buffers or a chassis, so you'll have to buy those separately. Just so you know in advance. Can I can I give a bit of a you know shout out for, for regarding buffers? Um, yep. Lanarkshire models are very good. They're white metal, so it adds um, a very nice casting. But also because they're white metal, it adds a bit of weight to your model. Because so the more weight's always good um, for keeping it you know, nicely on the rails. Also, if you and if uh, if you can't get hold of that there, I, I'm going to be using a bit of this here as well. I'm going to super glue some of this li liquid gravity on the bottom, so that'll keep it all nice and weighed down. A pinch the camera. Yeah, hang on a sec. Otherwise, there you go. All right, just very briefly. Let me know when you finish. Guns. So make sure it fits. Hang on. As you can see, it does. Before you do it, obvious, but sometimes even I forget. It's pretty much perfect straight away. I like to put a bit on the inside walls. It should be adequate. That's literally all I wanted to show. So that's where we are so far. Putting the glazing in is going to be awkward, but I just prefer to do it painted the main body. Yeah, you, 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 you just got to paint the main body. You just got to paint the main body first, and then put the roof on afterwards. After you put the glazing in. Yeah, because I mean, I like, I like to use primer before I actually put the paint on. It yeah, just sticks a lot better. So obviously, I want to spray. It. You could mask the windows, but I just think it's easy to do it this way. Uh, it does look a bit odd with the odd wheels, but again, I can live with it. I can always change them later. Yeah. Killian, yeah. Killian Keynes put liquid gravity isn't as good as lead in my experience. Uh, I've, I, I use, I, I've got some, liquid, I've got some liquid gravity here. Um, I think it's one of those. It can sometimes go everywhere, but once you once you've glued it in place, and if you've not got if you've got limited space, I find I find liquid gravity is rather useful. But, yeah, um, yeah. Because I mean, I uh, I, I, I first it? try. Yep. Fluid lead. There you go. It's, this ain't fluid. This is just the dry stuff. But don't no. use PVA glue to fix it. Whatever you do. Oh no, no, no it doesn't. No, no, no. Because it, it creates that. a cyanide gas, which is obviously poisonous and can kill you, and it expands. It breaks your model. So don't use that. So remember, that, kids, it. never use PVA glue on yes. this sort of stuff. No, 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 no. Expand and expand. Do you know, it kind of, it, it kind of reminds me of an old Harry Hills uh, joke, actually, which was in TV Burp, where. He was watching this nature documentary and he saw this this, this nature explorer saying, like, you know, um, uh, the berries on this tree are actually quite nourish here. They're very appetizing out there. Mm, lovely. And it just cuts, back, it cuts to Harry and he, he's got this prop tree branch in the studio with him and he's just picking off all the little berries and he's eating them there and he's having a cup of tea with it. He's like, oh, that's lovely. Oh, lo lovely that there. Mm. He's, oh, we're no one. Yes, yes, lovely. Mm, yum, yum. And then it cuts, to, then it cuts back to the... Uh, the this, uh, nature person again, and he, and he go, and he, he's go, he's eating away the the berries, and he spits out the seeds, and he goes, "Make sure he spits out the seeds though, because they contain cyanide." And then it just cuts to the Harry, it just cuts back to Harry again. He's like, oh, oh, "Good." Oh, let, me, let me just jump in there though. On certain fruits, seeds in the seed is good for you. That small amount of cyanide has cancer-killing properties. But well, you, know, you have to look into that one. 
So there's um like coke as well. Hey, hey. Well, it's got aspartame as a sugar. Yeah, aspartame is a chemical weapon registered in America. It's not good to put in your food, but they do it. It's in our food and drinks. Um, not good. What I was trying to say was some drinks like sugar-free stuff's got um aspartame inside, and it's kind of linked to cancer sort of stuff. But if you drink a lot of it, it yeah. <laughs> it just it just kind of reminds me of. Do you remember um, episode QI where it's like uh, Stephen Fry is all talking about saying like you know uh, uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't eat rat you should if if you had nothing but rabbit all the whole time like it it, it would kill you and they, everybody kept misunderstanding what he meant so you know never don't eat the rabbits because like they'll they'll kill you and Stephen's like no 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 you can you can eat all the rabbits you want here but if you had nothing but rabbit it can kill you and it's like. The, Big running joke for the entire thing. Fact, there's a, there's a fact it's on really QI, there was a comment about water, wasn't there? Yeah, hundred percent pure water will kill you. <laughs> oh dear, Tom, you always don't oh know Tom. Sorry, Drink here is water. here is much love, dear Tom Biddle. I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> You'll be stone dead in a minute. <laughs> I'm not dead. Yeah. Um, my, my it's on the wind. Mike, could I just have the camera for a second? Oh, hang on a second. We can get oh. better because we're not dead yet. Boom. <laughs> Is it I need to see Spam Lot, actually. I, mean, I think I just saw a preview version of Tim Curry as, as King, <laughs> King Arthur. Is the, um, is the camera on? Yes, it's on you. It's on you. Ah, oh, marvellous. Thank you. Uh, no, just to show. <laughs> um, uh, just to show, essentially. Uh, that's the tank side uh, sort of uh, done. Nice. Um, let me just uh, sorry, just on my end. Uh, that's the tank site on there done. As you can see with the cotton bud, yeah, the paint started to come off, but it's not anything to worry about. Um, but it's just now give it a basically it's got a nice oily oily rag sheen on the finish to Oliver. So I'm uh, I'm pleased with that. My second favourite Western loco. No offence, Oliver, but I prefer Doug. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Beg pardon, sir, but I'm a Western engine. Foxy thing don't want to fit on. In a rat paint. I was just, I was gonna say earlier on there, like you know, I was gonna ask like ask you guys how's your week been? But we've been calling we've been talking like every every evening like for this entire week about railway series stuff, like you know, it's, we seem to have just What's the point of actually even asking? <laughs> yeah, we've seen each other like every day almost. Yeah. That would be my fault. I apologize. <laughs> no, you're right, mate. Um no, yeah. it's, it's all just come back and then you're just like, oh you can just you know, see your friends and things. It's nice. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, I, when I noticed, uh, I think it was when Ryan was doing like his pseudo stream thing, he said, like, oh, we got Tom Foster on here, and I was like, wait, what? I was like, wait, wait a minute, isn't Tom Tanker there? I was like, yeah, uh, it is. I was like, for me, I haven't, I haven't seen I haven't seen him for years. Uh, he looked like he was 90. <laughs> and look at you now, you're like 91 now. <laughs> oh, time's not done you any good, has it? <laughs> no, that was, a good, uh, that was a good podcast we did. Um, it was, yeah. I, I remember we had great fun on that then. Um, is, it, is it all right if we plug our other pod podcast, the, um, the one that we recorded last year? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know if Ryan's listening to the stream. Actually, here's a, here's a question. Is Ryan actually listening to this thing right now? Because, I mean, it'd be surprising if he actually was. Cause, I mean, well, if, well, just say my name and I come crawling. <laughs> 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 to, quote, to quote what he said in uh, History of the Other Early Part 2, he was just like, you know, they were worried he might spontaneously appear before them, like, like Lord Voldemort or Piers Morgan. <laughs> Rogers and all. <laughs> this moment just appears out of nowhere. <laughs> it's like in Henry Sad's story. Like, uh, I don't want to get in trouble again with that policeman. That's why. Did someone mention me? Did someone mention me? Oh, for the love of sausages. <laughs> Michael, you're too good at impersonating people. Because goodness, I thought it sounds it's just not bad. It's not that good. I actually, when I said a plug for, I didn't mean that. I meant, I meant our podcast. That's what I meant. I meant oh right, okay. I meant our one that we um, we did. Uh, if you didn't heard it, it's the railway dis, railway series discussion group. We had our first episode last week, which involved all members here, wasn't it? It was all of us. Most of us, yeah. yeah. My um my of course I um stammered a lot and spoke too fast, but 
Hey, hey, what's new about what's new about that? Oh yeah, for, I, I, just, I forgot that. Yeah, we did. We did a. Yeah, I thought, I thought you meant the other thing. Yeah. No, 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 I mean, ours, which is uh, it's on the um, it's on the the Sif Dodo Island Forum SoundCloud channel, Railway Series discussion group, and uh, we talked about lots of you know, railway series things, and, and Gavin, Gavin did a very good Johnny Morris impression. Um, I was going to say, go and listen to it because then you'll hear it. But he's he's, he's teased you. He's any good? He's any good as our game? Isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's better than the uh, than get uh, singing the Percy thing, which <laughs> every, every every time we're making a call, like a group call out there, whilst it was at the end of the day, at some point, at just some random point there, one of us starts we start singing. But, but Mike, 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 I've got to ask you I, I, this impression. I don't know what you're on about. You're going to have to do it for. Oh, I've not heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a video. If you're not going to look on Gavin's video on Twitter, it's very good. By the way, guys, um, there's a video out there that it, David Gurney knows what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> we've, been, we've been quoting this since um, 2008. Because it's it's just so it's hysterical. It's a website. It's a video called um, "Tripping with Huxley Pig." Oh God, yes! The I remember this the, one. The guy in the video sounds the guy who plays um, Sam the Seagull sounds just like Gavin. Apparently. So if, if, you, if you if you type in "Huxley Pig," no, sorry, "Tripping," "Tripping" as in like uh, like on drugs sort of thing with Huxley Pig, and it, it, what, episode one, yeah, you know what we're talking about. Is that is that the one with Pimp Snake in it? Pim snake, yes. Pim snake. <laughs> I love that one. You've all been done by Pim snake. Yeah. <laughs> That's a marvelous story, baby. <laughs> oh, Brent. Oh, fuck me. That's not very nice, you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I think we are going to have to go, Mike. We talked about having a swear box. I think we're going to have to go down that way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Sorry about this. I need a fuck. I need a pound. Uh, let's make it, let's make fish. it, let's make it one p. <laughs> yeah, we were thinking about one stage. I was uh, the idea is basically I, I came up with this random idea saying like you know maybe 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 someday we would actually do a live stream where every time we do every time we swear uh, we would do, we would donate one pound to a, you know a charity maybe for comic relief or for children in need or out there. You know they do that for um I think they did that with uh, Danny Dyer when he was doing um when he's on uh, Slow Juice. All right. That's all he does. He just swears constantly. So one thing they do, so one thing they do throughout the program is they have this um this this count box on the right hand side of the screen. And every time he says it, he swears, you know, it, it's one up. Yeah. Well, I think I think I know who'll be uh, if we do this. I think I know who'll be paying the most. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'll get me wallet. <laughs> That's not good. What happened? Um, I've, a friend's just messaged me, and she's listening to this, and she says, you guys are funny. It's like listening to the Goonies. Ah. Who is this? The Goonies. Oh, sh has butts. <laughs> Have you just made up a new word there, Tom? Yeah. No, that's on Simpsons. No, I've just broken it. Look. What? Yeah, oh, it. I, was, I was trying to... Oh, I know what's going on. I know what's wrong. What happened? The screw's too long. It's pushed the body back up. <laughs> Oh. Oh. These things are horrible. These things are test. They said to test us. These little brake hangers are individuals. Really awful. No, there's no obvious little pin to locate them. You just have to sort of hover and guess. We don't like it. I wish people stop being so um mystic. <laughs> mystic. These things are just here to test us. No, it's just us not using our head. Oh, yeah, prick. Um, Tom, um, I, I, I have to say, um, well, I've told you this before, I'll say it again, uh, very impressed with your backdrop uh, of mountains. Would you like to tell us a little bit about those? Oh, well, thanks, mate. Well, um, yeah, I do, I don't, I've always done, um, I'm a bit, I also do a bit of arts in my spare time. And I've been practicing space paint, if you guys don't know. It's basically spray paint with um, 
you know, we, we if you got if you got I mean you can see this on the um on the street sometimes, like you get some artists who do things with spray paints where they like they paint planets or or waterfalls, that kind of thing, and it's all done with spray paint. Well that's what I've done here. So if you just type in things like how to spray paint um landscapes or skies, etc., you can pretty much pick it up from there. Or if you want anything done for yourself, you can always um, message me on Twitter and I can I'm, I'll happily make something for you. But yeah. It's all just um I might actually commission you to do this something for about some engines. Oh yay. Okay. That's you're booked. You're booked man. You've been booked. Oh god. Okay, so it's not too it's not too bad. I can still fix this. But it might give me a chance because um I was I was trying to consider do I take off the um oh thanks for too take off the saddles. Because um, funny enough, me and Tom Jetsky were talking about this the other day. Um, he was saying, if I was to make an E2 Thomas, I might as well just make one similar to yours, Mike, in case you wanted to use something for, for, for close-ups. I don't know what you mean. Well, basically, what you're saying, you were saying, because, I mean, because I don't know if he knows um, you're making the... <clears throat> you're making biscuits and things. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, okay, uh, might as well, might, might as well. No, 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 people will be asking anyway, so. No, they won't, they won't. Okay. <clears throat> you, you, you heard nothing, folks, you heard nothing. Yeah. I'm a twat, guys. You can, you can, we got away with it. Did anyone, did anyone see the uh, video of Macy Williams when he when she accidentally, uh, well, she thought she gave out a spoiler on um of Game of Thrones on TV and then turned out to be an April Fool's joke? <laughs> Don't think so. No, that was too fast. Sorry. Basically, start again. Basically, um, Macy Williams was talking about was talking about Game of Thrones, the latest series. Oh. And we think she actually gave it a spoiler, and she ran off the stage crying. And then yeah. so when um, the presenter ran after her, it turned out it was an April Fool's joke. Oh, oh those actor types. What are they like? Yeah. It's a bit like um, Robert Downey Jr. He calls Tom Holland during during an interview for Spider-Man Homecoming. And he's just like, well, he's never done this before. And uh, about a week later, Robert Downey Jr. was doing another interview for Spider-Man Homecoming, and Tom just just burst in, interrupting in, interrupting his interview. And he's like, he's like, uh, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing here? And he's like, hey, how are you doing? Hey, this is nice. This is nice. And he's like, okay, just because I interrupted your your interview doesn't mean you have to come in and interview mine. And he was like, well, okay. I come out, might as well come in and enjoy yourself here. And he says, like, and he, he explained to the presenter and all what happened. And he says, he says, he says to Tom, he says, he says, but why did you answer the phone anyway? So like, why, why the hell did you answer? Why did you not ignore it here? Because it was you. Well, yeah, apart from that, but you know, <laughs> I really like Tom Holland. I think he's a real, just comes across as a really nice, nice guy. Yeah, yeah. I ain't got a clue who he is. He's the new Spider Man for the new Marvel films. Spider Man, Spider Man. Spider Pig, Spider Pig. Spider Pig. I might as well show you guys something while I'm here. Um, anyone recognize this? Hey, I'll say sorry and get your camera on. Get your camera on, lad. Oh, that's a oh. coat. It's Annie in Primer. Red Oxide. So what I've done is I've, I've spray painted the entire body. It was a rich, it's a mix. If you don't follow my Twitter, it's basically a mixture of brass and plastic and resin. The coat sees a resin. Look back in previous episodes of Modelist Corner, and you'll see him make, showing you how to make them. And basically, um, this is the master copy of the seats. So all I did was basically make a, a couple of silicone molds and made loads loads of copies for, for this. Now. I have got three more coach kits in the in you know in my in my uh, modelist corner. So um basically in the future if anyone wants to see an actual video of it being made, not a live stream, but like a presented video of three more coaches being being made, I'll happily put it together. But yeah, um anyway, back on topic. So at some point once once I get around to it, I'm gonna spray paint, I'm gonna one thing I used to do with brass is um, sometimes when you when you when you solder things together, you get little little lumps of solder. You know, solder. So this sometimes when you when you prime it, 
Oh, again, sorry. Sometimes when you prime it, I find it's easy to find the lumps and you can scrape up, scrape them off and then just give it an another layer of primer. And then once you've, once you've, once you're happy with the, in, with the whole model, you can then paint it whatever color you want. Annie in primer. So, yeah. So basically after I've done that, it's going to be painted orange and then coats the teak. Lovely. Yes. Gav, Gav, you're quiet. Everything all right? <clears throat> yeah, I just had nothing to talk about. I was just I was pinning around putting these brake hangers on. They're not perfectly even. They're a bit of a dog's dinner, to be honest with you. But uh, the, you have to sort of glue them individually on those little beams. And it's uh, not the easiest thing to do neatly, I'm afraid. Not very impressed, but never mind. They're on. Oh, that's sure. Weather them to death, you won't know the difference. Yeah. Absolutely. Just test running it. Cut or not to cut? That is the question. Seems all right. It's not falling off on the tighter point anyway, so that's a good well, sign. Well, yeah, if it's right, if it's right, okay, then that's fine now. Yeah. Right. Right. That's that's not, not a problem here. Oh, yeah, another problem. Right. It's not smooth when when I when I push it on the tracks. Choo choo. If you look carefully, you can see it. It kind of drags a bit. The back wheel in particular. Yeah. Well, it's not doing it now, but it was. Maybe it needs a bit of oil. I don't know oil. I think um, I'm trying to think about the word. Is, the, is, the, uh, is there enough? Is is, is it a bit? Is it a bit tight? The axle in the um, in the bearing. It could be. Yeah, that's one. Yeah. Might be a job for a brooch or something, just to take a little bit off. Hmm. That getting that right, that right sort of, you know, not to um, when you've got a tight spot, not taking too much off because then you get it to there's too much slop. Which... Yeah, that's why making shutters is not the fun, the best part of this, of this um, hobby, if I'm honest. But it's got to be no, I mean, t Tony Wright makes it look easy, and I must admit, it's just something that I've, you know, he's giving me out with it, but I just don't. That's why I'm looking forward to you know, when it comes to when I get an Edward body off you, um. Uh, Gav, is I'll get one of your chassis because at least it's awesome. Sort of... I might as well show people that actually. Uh, a while back, I ordered a FUD Edward E type body from my, from my own shop and started to build it, paint it, have the details. And it's been based in storage for like a couple of years whilst I've been working on other stuff. Eventually, because well, I can print these cheaper here, but that's a FUD one. Nice. In, in progress. That's the original K2. That is gorgeous. Right. Beautiful, beautiful. Part of it's bow pen lined as well. It ran the splasher in the cab. It's bow pen lined. Wow. Right? No, I know I've said it and I keep saying it, but that, that blue is lovely. Yeah. It's a blue that, is Edward. that is Edward for me. That is absolutely. It will be. I mean, that's just like the illustrations come to life. That is just. Indeed. So that's going Gav, to be do, you, do you have any um, do you have any theories, Gav, on when when Edward sort of that version of Edward, which is the sort of the version that we sort of familiar with, when the what, latest one? Yeah, what year do you reckon he sort of um, look like that? Well, I don't know, but I mean, it could be old iron, so like sixties, but we don't really know. Obviously, we went for that overall because he oh, we'd lovely not to clank. So I mean, and it, iOS says um, you know after subsequent rebuilds, he's obscured his origins, which is why I started with the real K to and made seven three like variants to make that, but. In terms of what date it would have been in reality, it's up for up for debate, really. Would you say, looking at your model, <laughs> sorry, what what <laughs> sort of on that on that is it version four, Gav, that one? Yeah. Would, what would you say on there is sort of because you said you you started with the K two yeah. and then you did sort of your own rebuilds to get to that point. Is there anything on there would you say that still looks original? Is it pretty much all different by that point? <laughs> oh, excuse me. What's with the yeah, here? It's basically the only thing that's about the same is um, the running plate and the steps and the buffer beam. Other than that, all the whole tops by that point is completely redone. But obviously, the, the and the splash is the same diameter, you know, because obviously it fit the same chassis. But yeah, other than that, it's completely like changed per freelance variant V1, V2, V3, V3.5, and then V4. I might do some old versions as well, actually. I've got different ideas on it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe do the uh, William Milton version. 
Well, the thing is, when the Minnesota version looks more like a K2 anyway. But oh, what yeah, I was thinking version. is, it, with my freelance variant version one, all I done was change the cab. And on the version two, from that point then, I then changed the splashes to it's more like on the V4. All right. But I started off with a normal K2 that I made. Whereas if I started off with a late K2, that's a little different because it has a different chimney and the boiler is seated a bit further back. So it's not the boiler, sorry, the dome. So if, if you use that as a basis to then do the V1, V2 and so on, it would look a bit different. But obviously, I can't do it too much. Of course, um, I was going to say, Gab, your um, version 4, you could take yeah. your soldering iron to it and sort of twist up all his running points and he'd look like he does in Edward's exploit. Um... No. Agony pain. Well, it's no, one of the sort of, <laughs> one of the most dynamic illustrations in the railway series where he's just pulling that face and it's all twisted. It's like think of night. I'm, I'm here. That's it. <laughs> I'll just fit the vacuum cylinder to the mountain floor. So that big lump there. Yeah. So David so, Gurney, are you doing modelling at the moment? Hmm? I was saying to asking David Gurney if he's still watching. Is there any modelling you're doing at the moment? Are you there, Gurney? Gurney, are you there, son? Come on <laughs> David, David, you're listening there, lad. You're listening. I'm getting a presence. I can sense him. David, are you with us, David? David, can you hear me, David? David talk to me, Maple. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you know what? I, I, I... <laughs> he's there, he's there, all right, yeah, he's there. Ah, there's the laddie. <laughs> do you know what, do you know what, I should probably, I, I don't know if I should ask this or not, Davey, would you like to join in the stream? Like, come on, call. You just missed his, he said he, oh. he was saying earlier he felt like he um might be a bit slower. No. No, lad, no. Come on, on, come on, on, lad, join us. Do you want come on for a laugh, yeah, like, just, just for a chat, like, a bit of a banter, like, you know. Also, yeah, hello, 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 Bluebells5529, he's quite a celebrity in um gav's model modeling ah uh, he's uh, i've seen his work there like he's, he's done some fantastic work like yeah you, you're on the stream is he yeah davy's a lazy oh language davy come on no no language. i'll tell you what davy i'll send davy i'll send you the link here mate and, uh, and if you want to come on feel free to do so mate. you don't have to if you don't want to you can go you're more happy to we demand it we demand it. Join us. Yeah, young Baudry's um, was it carpet? Baudry's carpet, whatever. I have no idea. <laughs> right, uh, where is Davy? What Davy is? Davy is the carpet monster. He's stealing my things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Davey, Davey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on, bring some worms. Don't stop it, Davy. Right, Davy, I sent you a link there. All right. I send you the hangouts link there. You go come if you want to come on there if you're more than happy to. No, I was doing right. the I was doing the Pink Panther thing. So I put that, I'm gonna put that video. I'm gonna put that video on right now so people can see. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Right, okay. Yeah. Before you do, before you get, before you do, Gav here, yeah. Davy might appear at any at any point now here. So oh, like, I've just sent him a link now. So. <laughs> You know, the way you're saying that is like uh, Davey might appear, Gav, and if he does, I'm afraid there's not enough room for you. So see ya. No, 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 no. It's okay. Oh, it's yeah. good. I mean, no, right Davey's Davy, good. Davey's good banter. Like right? he's a good lad. I was looking well, to... There's something I need to take, say to Davey anyway. Goes back to the Sif week in 2010. <laughs> oh dear, what what did you guys do? I don't know. For some reason, we just kept saying. Oh, we, cool. kept saying we kept saying James, and we kept going James. James, is that where it came from? Yeah, it was me and David piddling about and it just got popular when it spread. We've also got um, got the there you go. Here, you go. This the the here we go, everybody. Shh. Are you on yet? Yeah, yeah, yes. you're on, you're on. All right, here we go. <laughs> you know what? It's that ending where you just start goes. <laughs> That's what it all said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It just got popular and it wasn't supposed to, but it did. And then Tom Biddle had this idea to um, do an edit of it, didn't you, Tom? Oh, yeah, because he reminded me, his voice reminds me of a character called Kevin from one of Ricky Gervais's shows, Derek. Oh, I. <laughs> you know, like, Kevin is basically a character. He's, he's It's an old folks home, and for some reason, he's like a homeless drunk who's allowed to stay there. So, <laughs> and he basically just hangs around drinking, talking about um, trying to get off with girls and things. It's, so all there was footage from the show, and it's just um, put his voice over it. Can we just can we just point out? It's just that Gav's voice sounds like that. We're not saying that Gav is like a homeless drunk. Well, that, that's. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, the voice that voice is a thin gets voice. I mean, I voice him in, in uh, uh, Professor Benjamin's uh, what do you call it? History, History of the other railway, railway and yeah. the other one. <clears throat> Tales of the other railway. He's um. Is the Davey joining? Or is he uh, I don't know. He, he's he's seen the message I sent him there, so I think he, I don't know. Good well, morning, Davey. You know I you want to. Want to. Yeah. <laughs> he saw the messages and then was like, geez, no, goodness me. <laughs> It, it can't be a bit like, um, was it Charlie the Unicorn? Come on, Charlie, let's go do an adventure. No, I don't want to. Come on, Charlie. Whee. <laughs> this is so boring. <laughs> tea cut has an interesting smell. I feel a bit funny. Hey, um, Mike, <laughs> yeah. come on me for a minute. Sorry? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, hang on. Everyone, watch my backdrop. Thomas of Candy Moon. Davies reply back. Ah, oh, I'll see. Thanks, but no thanks. How do I, jo how do I join? Yeah. Right, hang on. Um, a friend, a friend of mine, uh, I sent the link to, and they watched the link, and they've said that's mad. Love the zippy singing. Zippy. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Zippy. Zippy when he's an old man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. What are we doing today, Jeffrey? <laughs> Hey, hey, well, what are we doing today, Jeffrey? Oh, uh, uh, I, I, I was hoping we can probably you know, do some fun stuff, you know, Jeffrey. My name's George. My name's George. Oh, my name's George now. <laughs> Hello, my name's, my name's Bungle. I just sound like a strange man. Hey. Oh, my, my name is Bungle. I was the I was the I was the bear that frightened you when you were a child in my older older appearance. Who remembers? Who remembers Rod Jane and Freddie? Rod Jane and Freddie. So were they? Were they the singers of Rainbow? They were the singers. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I remember. Right. Uh, here's a here's a, here's a good question now for you guys. Who remembers? Now, this will be for the pe people in the chat now as well. This will be like a major '90s question because I grew up in the '90s. Here, who remembers on Channel Five a program called Have a Kazoo? No. Play, somebody, does anybody remember Have a Kazoo? Now it's a bit like uh, to me. I think it's a bit like Rainbow, but it has. Uh, let me see now. It had two puppets on it. it. Had two puppet characters on it. There, one of them was a robot called Messy. I think it was, and the other one was a dog. I've forgotten his name though, but um, Messy dog. No, I suppose, but yeah, Messi was a robot. Like he had, he had like a white head and that there, and he had a telephone for an ear, and, and he, he had a telephone in for for one ear, and then he had a, a paintbrush holder in the other, for for his other ear. Oh, I think I recognised some of it. They had like two presenters. Yeah, they had a one. Well, they had three presenters for a while, and one of them was actually a singer. Is one of them? Is it a show where it's like? Um, you hear, Davy? Hello. Yay. Can you hear me all right? Hey, yeah. Davy boy. Yeah, there it is. Welcome right, to Lovers Corner, Davy. It's oh, good in it. It is good, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How you been, Davy? Yeah, man, not too bad. My um, my fiance is out at the minute. Crank call. I can be as oh, loud and, and annoying as I want. Yeah, Davy. In case anybody, in case about, uh, nobody doesn't know, hey, Dave, uh, our Davy boy here is getting married. So congratulations, Davy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. I know, crazy adult stuff. Perish <laughs> <I know. laughs> the thought. I know. You're nervous. 
Um, because um, I'm a Brit. Um, I can't hear him. Can you not? I can hear him all right. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, I'm a bit no, nervous because can... I've got to do loads of bloody admin and it's. Uh, I can't hear anything. It's uh, oh. my microphone, not very good or something. Okay. Maybe, maybe it's. Uh, I think it's probably Tom. Oh, yeah, you... When he speaks, can you not see anything? Like, no, I can't see him. I can just see. Yeah, him I blue. can't see you, but I can hear you perfectly. Because I was thinking, um, it might. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to turn my camera on because I got nothing to show you apart from my ugly boarding. I can't hear or yeah. see him, but I know he's there because I can see the icon. Uh. <laughs> well, well, what was um? Okay. Oh no, wait, sorry. Well, yeah, I tell you what. Uh, Tom Foster, you want to, you want to, you want to exit the uh, group chat there, and you can come back on again here. Maybe that, then you might be able to hear him. Okay, I will leave. Goodbye. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just like we. Oh, I was gonna say. Oh, I just muscled him out. Sorry, mate. No, no, you are. You are. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll come, he'll come back. Our guest speaker. Today. He'll come back. He'll come back. He'll, he'll come back. Don't worry. I hope Tom doesn't hate me now. No, no, he doesn't. Look, he's back now. See. <laughs> right, can you hear him now, Tom? Hello, Tom. Hey, hey, there we oh, go. Oh. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. Uh, knowing, knowing me, Alan Partridge, knowing you, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. David, can I ask you a question? <clears throat> yes, you. mate. Oh, God. Have you painted your Abe yet? No, I still haven't oh. got it. <laughs> <laughs> I put oh. him away, but I've forgotten where he is now. Oh. So, so I, will, you I will paint him, don't worry. It might, and he might not look great, but he'll... Will he make the, will he make the sound after? <laughs> Bit of advice: Don't do that with children. Don't put them away and forget where they are. It's fine with trains, but not with children. Ugh. Stay in your shed until you have one. Children, where is he? I forgot. Take your finger out. You will stay in your room where the worms will get you. Then you. Problem is, unlike an engine, you can't leave kids in the shed indefinitely, because they'll end up dead, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. That went dark. Oh. Yeah, that's why you shouldn't have invited me on, guys. No, no, don't Too worry. dark. Nah, sure. that's that's thing thing. See, because I mean, um, it, 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 it's good, like, because I mean, I like, I like having, I like having, you know, mates on there. It's just to have a good, good old banter, really. That's basically what it is. Yeah. Bit of bants, bit of bants. Yeah. These instructions are awkward. <clears throat> Yeah. Poor Gav, he's just there struggling. The instructions are rubbish. It's a bit awkward. It's like I'm reading shit and I'm like, wow. Oh, well, it's it's a Parkside Dundas kit, like, you know, they actually are, they're not, you know. The In fairness, kit. I'd say Parkside are some of the better ones compared yeah, to. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. The, the, bad kit. I just don't know half of what it's talking about. I'm like, eh. I tend to call them if you know what you're doing anyway, then you don't need the instructions. <clears throat> yeah, but sometimes you don't know what you're doing. That's why the instructions are there. Yeah, I mean the basic concepts of most wagon kits are the same, but when it comes to the little details, they're not all the same. Yeah, you still do engage, Davy? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just haven't touched it in a while. But... Same as me. The last time I made a bloody Narambi video was half a year ago. It was like, oh shit. I mean, I've been making progress on it, but yeah, box. Yeah. <laughs> That's because uh, that's because now you're moving into the realm of uh, unboxing videos, isn't it, Gav? Because we know you're. Not <coughs> um, no, I'm not moving into the realm of it. I just wanted to do that as a one-off, <laughs> to, to as a, as a follow-up bit to my rant video, basically. Yeah. They are my two favourite videos of yours. They really are. Yeah. yeah. It's the bit where you go, you know, but they're boring. Come on. <laughs> well, but they are, but the but the fact is, they are. They are. Thing is, there's people hasn't seen it yet. Go to my YouTube channel, Spark. So I just put just look for locomotive un unboxing rant video or something, something at the top of similar. You see what I'm about. I went yeah. off on one, let's put it that way. You might be offended. Uh, if that happens, it's not the intent, but it is possible the result. But the thing is, though, guys, how do you make model trains exciting, interesting in the way you know, in a way that you would possibly? I don't know, because. Unfortunately, so, unfortunately, it's just a quiet hobby, so there's not really much much you can do in terms of. Well, it's more or less exactly like you know, if you want to if you want to show it off, like you know, just like you know, have a good way of filming it. Because I mean, I've seen, you know, we were talking earlier on like about how making up certain videos out there, like, you know, it's the way you have to film it all to make it all look really, really nice and all out there. So. See, I'm scared to do a review video now in case Gav doesn't like it. Mm. Mate, it doesn't matter what I think. 
if you, if you want to do unboxing video in the way that I don't like, it doesn't matter. It's just my opinion. Yeah. yeah I you're, not, you're not making the video to please me. Why do something different? Like, I mean, because I've got to review this. Well, if it works. Actually, I meant to review my OA. So, um, so Davy, why? Uh, this, this is just a bit of a just random question, really, here. But uh, what what uh, what got you very interested in, in chilling into Modeler's Corner tonight? I uh, don't know. Tom, it into it. Sort of, <laughs> Tom plugged it to me uh, right. on Facebook. Which which sorry, which Tom Biddle or Foster? Uh, Biddley Whitley. Biddley Whitley. <laughs> <laughs> Biddley Whitley. <laughs> Biddle that boy. That sounds like something out of the Beatrice Potter novel. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 you tell me, best Biddle boy. boy. That's my, that's my name when it's here for. Yeah, I call that. him that when I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> uh, the tale of Bidley Whitley. Bidley Whitley, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does it um, get safety water, Whitley? Do what? Does it get safety water? Safety Whitley. You remember? Come on. Oh, safety, yeah. Uh, yeah, go for safety, Whitley. Yeah. <laughs> Can, can, I just, can, I, can I just say, Biddly Widdly, I know that works now with, it's like we talked about on our podcast about Johnny Morris and he's there, well, he pickety pockety pickety pockety for Terence the Tractor, now he can go Biddly Widdly. Or you can just change it and modify it slightly. Peter Fowler, 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 Peter that it's pickety pockety, I think he says. Really, yeah, pickety pockety. Yeah. Though, so, though, I did say, I did say in the chat one time that he sounds, he sounds like if he's saying pick a po pick a pocket, pick a pocket, pick a pocket, pick a pocket. It sounds like it sounds like he's singing Fagin from Oliver Twist. Pick a pocket, pick a pocket. So, uh, what was it? Um, I that reminds me. Uh, if, uh has, it, has anybody seen the new Wurzel Gummidge image that spouted yesterday? Yeah. Who's playing him? Oh, Mackenzie Crook. Mackenzie Crook. He was. Oh, in the yeah, I've seen that. Sorry, yeah. I recognised him. I've also. Yeah. And in Pirates of the Caribbean as well. Yeah. Also in the office. And yeah, uh, in the office. Yeah, good. I, he's good. He's a good choice, though, actually, because I mean, um, I think some people, some people weren't quite, weren't quite so sure exactly about the appearance of Wurzel Gun, saying that he looks terrifying. I was like, no, he doesn't. He does. He looks, he looks fine. He does look to me. I, I, I would like to meet him down a dark alley, if I'm honest. Well. People are all saying, like, you know, but uh, he, he scares me. He was getting out there, and I think to myself, but he's a scarecrow. He's meant to be scary. Yeah. <laughs> I did see, I think it was Ryan did point out he didn't look a bit like Freddy Krueger. I, I know, see. I know, and that's even I pointed out. It's just like, but he's a scarecrow after all. It's his job. <laughs> Scare man. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted somebody scary, you should look at the Crow Man from the original series. Now that's a bit of a weird name, the Crow Man. There was, there was another series of um, what's it called, um, Mr. Gummidge, and it was an animation. Yes, I somebody, uh, some guy uh, <clears throat> wanted to make these like Wurzel Gummidge stop motion films, wasn't it? But I think it was just the animator that found the that found the clips. Yeah. And developed them. Yeah, and he got uh, he got he got John Pertwee, like John Pertwee, to, to voice them, didn't he? Yeah, reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. Oh, that was an awkward silence. <laughs> it was a Doctor Who reference. Yeah, we know, we know. Oh, okay. that, that makes it even worse. Ah, paintbrush, you tit. Language, Michael. I said paintbrush. Yeah, I think there's another word going to follow. No, I thought joke. Do you know any Doctor Who jokes? Yes, I do. Oh, <laughs> you know <laughs> that is that is worse. And I, I say to my pupils, and I do say it every time I go, I've got a joke for you, and I go, not knock. I go, who's a doctor? I go, doctor. I go, that's right. And they just look at me. I get so much satisfaction. I get so much satisfaction from them looking. So I mean, there's a video I saw online there, which was about um, you know that you know that music composer Ronnie Hazelhurst, who does like uh, the mu theme music for like Last of the Summer Wine, the two Ronnies, and all that there. All the good comedies. No, but I do know. Right, well, but, well, you'll recognise his music and all that. But anyway, somebody did this video saying, like, you know, that Ronnie has this very thing about um, putting the name, like, having the vocal, the name titles in the actual tune, like, you know, so say like, like last of the summer wine, it's it, the tune goes like, doo, 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 doo. and if you sing the if you sing the title, the last of the summer wine, it, 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 the tune I was doing, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Um, <laughs> 
punch it. <laughs> so somebody, so somebody said, like you know, imagine if he, imagine if he actually did uh, put vocals to Doctor Who, how it did sound, and he did his own prediction. He just went like you know, Doctor Who, Doctor Who. It's just weird something, and he goes like, oh god, what have I done? <laughs> He's just on for Apu. Hey, <laughs> hey! <laughs> uh, I feel like I wish Nicky would play um, cupcakes now. Hey, I was saying I wish I was more patient. I wish I didn't eat all my um, all my my chocolate brownies. Oh, right. I fi- I I, fi- I finished off uh, my Jaffa cakes there, so I've only got like I don't know, I've just I've drank a third now in my cider here, so yeah, I've still got another two thirds to get through. And I gotta be up early as well because I got a garden railway to make up. Oh, these instructions really are bollocks. Uh, just so you know, Gav, uh, the camera's still set on you there, just so you know. I'm still struggling to, like with these breaks. Yeah, we should probably, we should probably see how are we getting on here, guys. Tom, uh, Tom Foster, how are you getting on? Um, can I put the camera on? I'm um, yeah, camera's on you, camera's on me. Uh, yeah, other side's working on well. Uh, hold up, just so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so that's been tea cut, so it's getting a nice worked sheen to it. Yeah, the back's a bit of a pick to do because there's a lot of detail on there, but no, he's coming on well. Oliver, the Western engine, there he is, the man. Yeah. Well, engine, engine, not man. Um, so what I might do next is, um, Oliver's toolbox are midway through the splasher and the model has it how some 14xx have weights forward so i'm going to drill out the holes and literally move it back and then fill the holes in with a spot of filler cool uh tom biddle how are you getting on badly uh, oh. um, i'm just trying to well i'm just trying to make sure it um, works smoothly but I've, i'm still getting i've i've, I've um i've filed down the the, the the chassis spaces yeah um there's still a bit of it's still not smooth, smooth, but I'm just going to try um, attaching it to the body for the first time yeah, and see if that makes any difference. Mm. But it's much nuts, and hopefully, because what I did last time, like, when I screwed the um, body onto the shell, I, um, I, used a, I used a screw that was too long and it broke the body apart. Right. Uh, because basically the screw is right under the smoke box. Hmm. It undid everything from the smoke box to the uh, smoke box saddle. So I've got a, um, sold it all out. But like I said, it gives me a chance to, um, I guess, decide because I'm, I'm still in the size of. Do I, do I want to use the uh, the bits to make the? Um, do I want to make an actual accurate E2 painted blue, or do I want to? Uh, Used to be, that was specifically used to make a Thomas tank engine in the kit. Yeah. Because Ace Products, the man who designs the kit, has made has made the kit. So if you wanted to, you can make a Thomas a tank. Okay. So what do you guys think? What do you feel? The, what do you feel think? Should I make an E two or an improvised Thomas tank? Do what answers your heart the... tells you. Answers on a postcard, please. So be quickly. Lewis, Lewis Grave now says he's just started an RWS truck custom. What 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 are you doing, uh, Lewis? Be intrigued to know. Uh, Andrew Rose Cole, uh, sorry mate, uh, can't, can't, can't have me on the call here, mate. Sorry about that. There, um, we just we, we, the reason why we got Davy on board is because we didn't we didn't know he was going to be coming along on this. So we thought, well, you know, we know Davy here. We thought he'd come along for for a bit of a laugh. He's also a close friend. Yeah. Yes. He's a- very yeah, nice. so sorry, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry about that, Andrew. Sorry. Um, sorry, there's yeah, a few I'm questions. Everyone, sorry. Basically, I'm only here because I've been sleeping with the director. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Metaphorically, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm just looking at there's a few other uh, thing here. Quick question from Michael: Is Models Corner all for modeling? I've got a wide variety of projects on the go besides ten cents. Um, yeah, it could be, yeah, it's basically just like, uh, what it is based model's corner. It's just basically like, um, it's just like, just like a social stream really. But then like, you know, at the end of, at the end of the day, like, you know, at, at the end of the stream, we, you know, we get to show off how far we've come with our buildings, our building kits 
or models since we started off at the very start of the stream and just see how far we got through in by the matter of hours that there. Just it kind of just like shows you like you know how much how much time it actually takes to work on a model, really. Basically think of it as like you're in a club. Yeah. And it's the same same concept, only really. you're doing it with people from different parts of the country. And it's also live on on YouTube. So you know it's a nice feature because I know I live literally in the middle of nowhere and I've literally there's no my name is club probably about 40 miles away so modeling is a very isolating thing for me it's normally just like you know me and the workbench so this is really really nice yeah it's and i say for me as well because i'm pretty much really no mate so you know oh. yeah <laughs> oh, come on mate no, but seriously it is unless you're with a club it, you, you know it's by yourself pretty much i mean i do go to a model club once in the blue moon at coventry but uh i kind of lost interest so i don't really go so much now well, yeah. for me, it's more that the, the club, my club's just like what about two miles from my house, but it's it's mostly well, the OG stuff is stopped, really. Yeah, and it's, it's annoying because I was helping out on the exhibitions with the OG layout, and it's only when I decided to get back into it again and actually start making the Thomas for it, yeah, they, they cancelled the nights and the OG layouts are still there, but we don't know if they work and we can't take into exhibitions or anything. God, that's that's very stupid. That's an ambition for the future because I'd like to, I'd love to go to an exhibit. You know, I was hoping they'd be at the Reading show this year, but when this is all up and running, I'd love to run this. Um, you know what, though, Tom, I think I, <clears throat> I think that's going to change regarding seven mil with O Gage because O Gage RTR ready to run is now so cheap. You know, yeah. actually, it's, it's about in some cases about fifty pounds difference between a top end double O model and and a, and, a, and a seven mil like i think it's the, the dapol daypol uh 57xx pannier um is is like 250 pound or something like that which is for seven mil that's it's, it's I, was at, that I was at gildex once and pete waterman was there and he was talking to somebody and he was sort of like having a good whinge about saying oh i thought i was doing a favor and he was basically upset because the rtr company is doing so well with their gauge obviously their gauge kit part of the industry is dropping right and yeah. yeah, it's because of prices. Because you look at, um, like Tom, your um, your O gauge diesel, the O eight. Yes. Uh, they're approximately two hundred quid, give or take. Where if you if you used to buy a kit in O gauge, build it up, you'd be paying probably four or five hundred quid, maybe yeah. three fifty if you're lucky. So yeah, you know, it's a lot cheaper. The problem, the problem is though, is like if you're getting everything all ready to run out there, like you know, how how are you gonna learn like how it's all put to, how it's all put together if you need to service them? If the, you know if they don't. If you need to like have a bit of experience as well, like if you want to build your own kits, your own models, that's a very big sort of the hot potato in the uh, modeling world. Um, yeah, and, uh, there's, there's the likes of Tony Wright, who's very much about you know you should be you know building things, doing things. That's what the hobby. It's not just sort of like getting I, out. I disagree. It's, you make it how you want it. You yeah, because I mean. Yeah, because I mean, that, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a more of a like a hands on modeler, if you know what I mean. With yeah, um, yeah. with like you know getting getting working with my hands and I, i've tried 3d modeling before and you know it's it's very hard it, it, i find it quite stressful i actually nearly had i actually had a a near mental breakdown with a, a 3d project for university and it li literally just nearly broke me really yeah um, um i just i just find computer, i just find computer art so satisfying you see, um, what, what, what I'm really excited about at the moment is like, you know, I've, I've ordered one of Gab's uh, purses, and like, as has been said, weathering is what I really enjoy, but I, I really want, I can use an airbrush, I use it for weathering, but I don't really do a massive repainting stuff. Yes, I repainted um, my, my duck, my Batman duck, uh, well, Batman 57XX, but, but uh, repainting is yeah. something I've uh, sort of, you know, got into, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, using Gab's models as uh, sort of my way of sort of repainting lot uh, locos yeah and back to the question of the mo gauge well for me it's not so much um that no one's buying it it's more that the club isn't organized itself so basically i don't know what happened i think less people were coming on the friday night when they're actually supposed to be putting it together and they just stopped coming in which is sad really but I think it, it is it is sad yeah, they did some really. They've got, they've got two great layouts. They've got a, um, one that's based in. They've got an SR layout, which was based in nineteen fifties, and they've got a, a Scottish Highland layout. 
which has some amazing buildings built by a late modeler, Neil Hurd. What period is the Highland one? Is it steam or diesel? I think it's, 90, it's, I think it's 1950s, so it would have been diesel or something. Can I, um, Tom Foster, can I ask you a question? Sure, go for it. What sure. would this have? Just three links and stand to a screw. Uh, what, 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 what is it? Sorry, what exactly is it? Yeah. It's a, is it a horse box? Yeah. It's a horse box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it will have screw links because it will be fitted. Okay. Happy days. Cheers for that. So, yeah. Davey, uh, what, uh, what type of modeling are you doing, like, for, like, in your engage? Um, well, in terms of actual... See, I'm not doing anything specialist like you guys, which is why I'm such a pleb when it comes to this. Yeah, you're not. But, um, you're not, mate. You're not. But, um, yeah, all I've got is just like sort of two foot by four foot layout. Uh, you know, basically just a circle with uh, some sidings and stuff. One station, one tiny station, like a hole kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, just sort of a, you know, little village in the center with, yeah, and uh, I made a I made a tunnel as well. I was so proud of myself. Pat on the back for Dave. Yeah. Got like a right good kid there. Uh, so yeah. Good boy. So, I'm, that, that's, I'm your, that, that's your engage one, is it? Or is it the double though? Oh, uh, that's my uh, engage one, which oh, is um, yeah, which has pride of place in uh, my little desk. In uh, yeah, it's right next to my um, fiance's desk, and she doesn't hate it. So that's uh, that's good. <laughs> cash back yeah, yeah. back of the net yeah. in off the red sorry what are you two working on together we are actually yeah so she doesn't hate it if anything she actually quite likes it yeah. so oh, that might cool. change in you know 20 years time when i've you know taken up the entire living room and just sort of grinded it down a bit but we'll see and then you say but you told me you liked it you know <laughs> That's oh, a verbal yeah. contract. Can I ask a question, guys? So, Gavin and Tom. Yeah. yeah. I know you said in the past, I don't know what they call again, but it's the thing you used to, to um, when you're, ah, uh, when you're putting, it's like, a, I can't it's called, when you're trying to, um, get off any, get off any excess around the, 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 the a brooch. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't got one, what's a good substitute? <clears throat> um, Oh, well, mouse tail far, but I wouldn't recommend it because no, I was about to say, very good idea. That. You're best to use a brooch, really, because yeah. it'll, it'll okay. evenly take it. You want, I don't know what it is for seven mil, but you want one that's a parallel one that it won't take off, to, it'll take off exactly the right amount. You, you okay. can use a taper one. I mean, I always use a taper, but it's so, so slightly tapered. This here, it's one eighth, which is used for the axles, it's only slightly tapered, All right? Or you can use parallel one, but at least if you get a taper and it starts with small, you can actually get it in to begin with. A bit easier. Yeah, you get a little pack like these. Eileen's and poem about by this a lot of this stuff. From. All right, an excellent, uh, an excellent resource is Eileen's is. Emporium. Excellent, loads of stuff. All right, Wizard Models is another good place to go if you want those little bits and bobs. Yeah, I, I go there for if I can get my spat and wrinkle clubbings for my running stock. Well, I was hoping to have this done, but I'm also going to have all of those now. Like, this thing's just not smooth enough. Uh, that was, that was the, wheels, the wheels, the wheels lagging the back wheel and things, and it's all bit, yeah. And it's it's also leaning to one side, so it's not it's not dead straight or anything. So that's more tweaking I've got to do. But hopefully, if it's if, it, if I can connect it properly, power you know, power wise, it should work, should work fine. Right, I'm um, just looking back at some of the chat mentions of the chat here. Um, Edward Backman, 12. Hey, man, did you enjoy writing Free the Rose and Heart of Gold? Why did you pick Toby and Bulgy to write for? Um, well, first of all, I'll, I'll do the Bulgy one here, basically because, uh, you know, we have Bulgy back, and I just thought, well, I might just write a story about him. And, uh, yeah, Free the Rose just, just came out of the bloom, really. And... Uh, I let you. I just came. I just let you got it there on the spot there during my first writers' workshop there, and I pitched it to Ian and Michaela, and they says, "Yes, do it, do it. We love that idea. That's fantastic." Um, for Toby, uh, I chose Toby because I was kind of tired of seeing Toby being like you know some of the episodes where it's always showing he's old and that there. So I thought, well, I want to make. A, I want to give Toby an episode that you know 
he does good actually. Like he, he doesn't end up in like very right. tricky situations where he yes he does a good thing. Like you know he, he gives Toby a bit more action. So I thought yeah why don't we have him like chasing some robbers? So yeah. Pinch so, the camera again. Oh, almost still on. Yeah, you're still yeah. on the camera. Yeah. I just want to explain something. Quick, that's all. Um, this particular kit and building comes with these little farty plastic buffers, which yeah, they're okay, but it's a bit awkward to take the flash off without making a mess of them, right? So I decided I'm going to replace them with these for 51L, which is basically Wizard Models, pretty much. Uh -huh. right? It's a simple little way of improving models. I've also got a load of springs and other bits, because I'm doesn't spring them, but. It, uh... a lot anyone just do, for anyone who just saw me sort of look like I was looking at my phone, it wasn't as I was disinterested. Um, I've taken one as I was using the torch on it because I've uh, taken one of the splashes off. And I was drilling out the holes underneath, and it wouldn't come. And I forced it with my fingers, and it's just shot across my workroom, and I've got no idea where it's gone. It's been oh, sacrificed. It's been sacrificed to the carpet gods again. Oh, I can do without that being sacrificed. I need that, yeah. guys. Just to say, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and do that thing I was mentioned in the beginning. Uh -huh. If you saw my Twitter post, this is the Clarabo coach I worked on a few, I finished a few weeks ago. Sorry. Who's, who's, who's texting? I no, caught my phone. No, I'm trying to use the torch on my phone to find this bit, and I caught the um, room. Right. <clears throat> well, basically, it's all the scrap where you can see the brass coming through. Yeah. Well, hang on, sorry, I'll get you. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to try and fix that now, just quickly. So what uh -huh. I'm going to do, I'm going to very lightly just dab, dab it with a bit of the, the paint I used with the undercoat. So I, paint, I painted it with orange, or spray paint, and yeah. then once that's dried, uh, give it a little, a tiny, a tiny coat of the uh, the, the uh, sepia paint I used to, to um, take it, and then hopefully should match. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. I'm going to leave the buffers off. I've decided I'm going to hold them because I might want to spring them. But I don't right. know yet. So I'm going to just leave it as a future maybe. Leave the buffers off for that purpose. All right. Hey, I, I like to use three links and dingums, and it's, it's, it sometimes helps. Hmm. So I'm going to give myself the option later. I'm just, I'm just currently cutting out the chassis here now for my milk fan here. Let's go and get back. Um... Give me five minutes. Yeah, no worries, mate. I'll give you guys a bit of progress here on my feedback from anything. I just uh, just gave a quick brush over some paint there. There's my milk van there. So it needs another coat of paint, really, though, because it's showing up where the glue and all is. So, yeah, let's just give you an idea how it looks. That's good. That's not bad for, um, it's something I've always been a bit. A bit funny about you know, uh, like laser cutting because of wood. Yeah. So I've never been sure if I'd be happy with the quality. If so, if I never went for the, obviously most running stock is is um is made of wood anyway, but planks of wood. But I never thought actually having a, a miniature version, I mean a model with made of the same material would look that. Effective, that makes sense. Yeah, because I mean, the the basically this kit, there's a couple of layers and all you have to you know you have to put over there. Just it's basically just trying to make it, make it a bit more thicker and all that there, so you're able to you know lift up the panel without squeeze it all, all the detail out. But yeah, it's coming all right. I'm quite surprised by it there. How you know? So um, what was I going to say there? Oh yeah, I was looking through uh, some of the questions there. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, people in the chat there. Like, you know, I haven't actually answered your, some of your questions here. I'm just going to go back here and answer a few more of them for you guys. So, uh, dee -dee -dee -dee. All right, famous Hector. When will filming of Brown Slide Engines begin? Um, yeah, just a few bits of Brass and Engines has actually been filmed. Uh, it's just taken a lot, just taking quite a while to do here. Basically, what well, the main problem is that we're trying to we're trying to get the um, the location to actually film the, the, like the main parts of it. There, uh, we have found we have found a location, but it needs to be it needs to be like properly renovated. So we need to uh, do some work out there to get it all properly done up and uh, make it suitable for for filming in. But 
Uh, but yeah, for the time being, like you know, I'm only working on small bits for the film, just like working on little small scenes. But yeah, it is still being filmed, like, and we're still testing out, we're still testing certain certain items along the way. Plus, I'm also editing up the voice cast as well because um, they've. Uh, I have to, I have to, I have to know exactly how long, how long each scene has to be, and uh, I'll have to admit though, uh, I'll, I'll have to reveal here. Davy here is actually uh, one of the one of the cast members in Brass Nights because he was he was one of the earliest choices. Yay! Yay! Yes, buddy. Uh, you, you, seriously, mate, you did a fantastic job here. If, if ever, if, if it's okay oh, for it's me different. to reveal, if it's okay for me to re reveal which role Davy's playing, Davy's playing the Farquhar Station Master. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, the basically when uh, in the scene where I've written down where Thomas crashes into the shed, there I actually I just gave Davy like you know the line here, and I just I literally I just literally just just thought like you know well, now what, how would Davy sound? How would he sound here if I write this? If he was to say this here, so I wrote down what I think he would say. I sent it off to him, and he got back to me, and he said he, he replied back. He gave me like different takes on it, and each one sounded exactly how I wanted him to sound. I was like, "Wow, that's like that's not like where like any like coaching or anything one to one direction like that." He literally got it in one. I was like, "Wow, that's wow. that's brilliant." Hey, that's so cool. That's I'm cool. In it as well. Hey, I'm in it as well. Yes, Tom's in it as well. <laughs> yes, don't forget Tom. I think I'm just thank you for that though. That was really good fun. It was actually funny enough. You should, you should hear Ryan actually. Ryan is just more funnier. He he, he said he he enjoyed it more as well. He loved playing Daisy again. So, oh but, yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna I, I must I must get Ryan died to actually make it up the um, your the figure knife for the station master because uh, I swear he's gonna be he's gonna be a lot of fun to animate. He's gonna be a lot of fun to animate. I've always done. With I was going to say, it'd be funny to think, because um, obviously I played Thomas when I was like, what, about 10 years ago. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see a comparison as to, I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to sound like sort of self indulgent, but it'd be interesting to sort of see how different. It's how, different of, how different you sound from then compared yeah. to now. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, you always wondered, like, how, how much you change in that period of time. Yeah, because I mean that's 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 kind of why I chose you really for Thomas Lake. Because I mean I really liked your your portrayal of the character in the old Sith audios and uh, priorities. I thought like you know yeah, when I wonder, when if Tom's still available to do it there. So I called you up there and I says like hey, would you be interested in doing this? And he's like yes. I was like yes, great, thanks. Because <laughs> Ringo wouldn't do it. Yeah, Ringo wouldn't do it. Michael Angelis wouldn't answer the phone. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, John Hassler was uh, taken. So you know, Ben Small wouldn't talk to me. So. You're good to hear how your voice has changed, Tom. The uh, what the booze and fags have done to it over the years. Well, I'll tell you this though, Davey. I'll tell you this though. When when I was actually caught, when I was doing the uh, the one to one thing with Tom, of recording the lines, he didn't. He actually he, there's not. He's barely changed. Oh really? <laughs> he's barely changed. Like I mean, I couldn't voice Thomas, and he sounds exactly how he did all those years ago. I was like, that's he's still got it. Oh, thanks, guys. That means a lot. Because <laughs> I'm. Um, I think the most I've done, I can't think you, because I do remember playing it a lot, but it was a lot of various stuff, and there's always yeah within Sip and outside Sip, but yeah, thank It's just, it's, I don't know, I just, it's, it's just, it's always nice to play one of your heroes, you know. Like, yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, I've never, I, I, I've never portrayed Thomas before, because, I mean, you know, I've been chosen for for other things, but, uh, you know, I don't want to, really. Because because I, I don't know I don't know exactly how Thomas would sound, but then well, yeah. yeah. oh, because Thomas is someone. I mean, apart from everybody else in the show, I always felt like Thomas was someone who, who could be played by everyone. Yeah, he's kind of an oddball, so he could be anybody. So yeah, I think that's a fair comment. He's quite as characters go. He has quite a lot of different aspects to his personality that you can all play on. I think so. He can be a bit, he can be a bit of a moaner, but he can also be sort of young and sprightly as well. So. Yeah, and if you watch series eight, he's in every single episode. Yeah, <laughs> God, yeah. Like hero, everything, and every every villain, <laughs> he's the one who has to set them right. So basically, oh, instead, yeah. of, instead of being uh, Gordon Spencer, it's it's spent it's Spencer and Thomas. Instead of Diesel and Duck, it's Thomas and Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, I also noticed that people were actually were well, like talking about um, going back to uh, the episodes I wrote there with um, Heart of Gold. Yeah, people were all saying, like, you know, yeah, this is like the first episode in the entire series, in part of season twenty-three, where we don't see Thomas in the entire episode. It's like, 
I was like, yeah, well, we don't have to see him. We don't have to. He doesn't have to be there all the time. Like, you know, he's somewhere else. I'm back. Oh, he's back. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> Dirty fucker. <laughs> no decorum. Nope. And he died. <laughs> no, there's more. <laughs> Need to film that one day, Gavin. We have. He's after, yeah. Okay, guys, I think I've finished. I think I've finished it. I don't think I need to take it any after all because it's what I've done so far. Yeah, it looks very really good, Tom. I've seen to, it cool. seems to blend it quite well. So yeah, that's one done. I've just got to finish the other one, and I've got an incredible. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, he now has a tank engine to pull it. Yeah, what one that works. So yeah, what are those things called again, guys? Gav? For the wheel. What's that? Those screws, what are they called again? No, 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 those, those, like, like those files that you put through. The taper brooch, one, one, one eighth taper brooch. Yeah, or, or remus, but the you know, brooch oh, is brooch a brooch, yeah. better term. Taper brooch. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is going to change the subject. I was actually playing, um, my sister's got this thing called Nintendo Switch. Oh, right. I... oh yeah. And um, I played this. She's downloaded Worms. Remember Worms? The Worms! worms. Oh, like, yeah, I remember Worms. Yeah, you were asking for that. Well, I've, um, I've, 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 I, I, um, I've started a team. I've named it after most of the guys that we just, on the chat. Huh? The instructions are fucking awful. So I called it, I called it Spastic Patrol. <laughs> you called it what? What? I called the team Spastic Patrol. Spastic Patrol? Spastic yeah. Patrol. <laughs> Jesus, Tom. Spastic oh Patrol! <laughs> Yeah, that's that's not the most PC thing I've ever heard. Oh, sorry, what well, happens to correct this? Sod that. It's just a bad on freedom of speech. Thought control. Let's see. Um, government religion. Yeah, I, I always remember like when 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 I used to play Worms there with um, with my sister there. She always we all. Hmm. Please say I'm not the only one here. Did everybody always pick, the first player always pick the Scottish one? Because he always had, he always, he always had the best, he always had the best deliveries. But did you play Scott? Did you play Worms one or two? Because Worms two was the one we most played when we were younger. I think it was Worms two. That was yeah. I think I remember the Scott. What, what did he say? Again? I can't remember. It was like, I think it was one stage where he, where he says, "Catch them, magic down the mate." Yeah. <laughs> I got a question for Tom. Foster. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, Tom? Yeah. No, no Tom, Tom, Foster, Tom, Tom Foster. Tom Foster's uh, trying to search the carpet of doom. And um, uh, oh. I think it's one. And I I'm, I'm, I'm not screwed because I'm missing a, a sandbox for Oliver. And, That's not good. And Buster can't there. speak to you right now. I know you haven't. Please leave yeah. a message at the end of the beep. And we'll get back to you. Oh, you what, that is depressing. That is. That was pretty sad. Yeah, I was wondering. Mm -hmm. well, it, was a, it wasn't a bad impression of Holly. Well, I get the help from people here. So. It's a bit like, um, you just got me thinking of Family Guy. Oh, yeah. It goes like, uh, oh, yeah, I was just wondering uh, mm -hmm. oh, where the newspaper boy was. <laughs> get your was... fat ass back here. <laughs> Can I request some help, please? Yeah, go ahead, mate. All right. You see on, the, on here... Yeah. Instructions say number 10, these are gusset plates, right? So you've got five there, five of them. Right. Well, that doesn't really tell you exactly where on the sole bar to pull them. That's the only picture you got, the only reference. There's no little slots and tabs. That's awful. That's that's not very good. That's not very clear, that. It's, it's crap. So I'm just guessing now. It's like, what, do you space me even there? What? Because that doesn't really tell me anything. That's shite. That's shockingly rubbish instruction. There's no exact <laughs> position in it. It looks let's like two it, slightly close, one a bit further, two slightly close, but you don't really know. And there's let's no get, this must be in something it. Pico should take on board now, because they bought box they've done this now. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> but that sort of instruction... Um, Actually, hang on a sec here. Hang on a sec. Isn't much use. Right. I've just actually, I've only just opened up here the Parkside they've done this kit here for this ch chassis here, and they don't come with instructions. <laughs> so I'm now thinking here, would that actually apply to the other kits then? Shouldn't do. Should have instructions. Bit unfair, are they? I don't know. <clears throat> this looks like I'll just have to guess and hope it's correct. Yeah. I ain't got no photographs of the prototype, so. Oh. 
I mean, there's little tiny mould lines, but whether that's where you put them, I don't know. It's just a guesswork, but we'll go for it. Yeah. If it looks straight, like I said, I'll just cheat and weather it to death. Well, you've got the expert there to uh, guide you through. Well, I'm pretty good at weathering anyway. Well, yeah, I suppose you're. Well, yeah. What, 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 am I, what do I mean, suppose? Everybody's good at weathering. Where's my box from? <clears throat> Well, yeah, that sandbox has gone. It literally pinged across and I'm searching for everything out, and I can't find it. So, wow. um, pinged into oblivion, as Tony might say. Oh, it, yes, this is me joking about the carpet monster, carpet black hole, and you see it's had its revenge because it's like Sorry. essential, Sorry. essential piece that has, uh, has vanished. So. Uh, I'm going to have to nab one off another one, but then I'm going to have to paint it because the one I've got is in black, so... Rubbish! 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 Rubbish. What do you think of it so far? Rubbish! Yay. Rubbish! Rabbit! 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 <laughs> the annoying thing is that when I take this off this other model, I will find the original. That is inevitable to happen. Uh, do you know what always it always annoys me is uh, it, like when you tr when you lose something here you look you spend ages looking for it you can't find it anywhere and then when when then when oh, you've given up there you just say like you know right that's it I can't find it then as soon as you turn away after saying that word you instantly see it it's right in front of you staring at you mocking you you know right. I'm, I'm going to try that I'm going to try that now so you do not find it give up no, no way it's not there I'll just have another quick look you know what I just found. What? The gearbox. The gearbox? Thomas. That's, oh, where was it? In the in his box. In the box. <laughs> oh, the E1. Uh, well, yeah. I had a feeling it might have been in there because, like, you know, you, you said when you were losing, you lost any the the, the, the end pieces for any in Clarabelle, and he was like, you know, where could it be? And then he, said, he called us back the other day saying, I found them. They were in a box. <laughs> Not the same box, but a box. Well... well Still, it's, it's a box. It's a boxy sort of... Boxy sort of work. Really awful. Not impressed <clears throat> with these little bits at all. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I told. <laughs> Didn't say too healthy there. I hate mom. No, 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 no. I wish I did stamp this. <laughs> I wish I took up a different hobby like stamp collecting. Yeah, fishing. That's, that's the feature. Right, I'm sorry with the low code, you're going to lose your sandboxes and go on the reserve list of bits to have oh. oh, sorry. It's all Tom's fault. What's in the mic up? It's my so I want to smash something. No. <laughs> He sounded a bit like me earlier on now when I was trying to get this stream to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a couple at work, actually. So I smash your brains in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to smash their brains in. Back in the face. Hey. So here, David, if you if you ever want, you know, if you want to, like, you know, uh, if you take part in Models Corner in a future stream, would you be interested? Um... Like, if, like you know, do modeling all there now. Um, see, the thing is, I don't think I'm really doing anything that um, would sort of merit uh, people really commenting on being kept up to date with because my modeling is so lax at the minute and probably will be for a, the foreseeable just because I'm so busy at the minute. Yeah, I show you, you're doing, you're still doing the acting, aren't you? Well, yeah, um. Yeah, still doing acting, and um, I've just started a business. And right. um, also, I'm about to get married next month. Yeah, yes. So, business you got, mate? Think of that, guys. It's how much Brian is getting married. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. 
What sort of business is that? That sounds cool. Um, it's uh, an agency, like an acting agency. Oh, oh so, right. Yeah, so I'm um, acting as, well, an actor and also an actor agent, uh, me and a couple of other people. So we just, um, yeah, take actors on our books, then get them to, you know, apply for jobs, negotiate contracts for them. And like the leeches that agents are, we skim some of their money off the top. So. Yeah. Yeah, full time leech. That's my occupation. <laughs> See, I, as well as a writer, I actually work, I also work as a voice actor for CBBS as well for their program Pablo. And uh, yes, yeah, Tom, Tom Biddle would know he's been caught in Tang a few times. Ooh, ooh. Hey, you're amazing. Yeah, so uh, I do, I do take the piss out of you for that. That's only because um, it's, hey? it's, I do take the mix out of you for that because of the fact that it's like. But then again, it's like you know, you 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 work on television. <clears throat> it's just our mate, you know. Yeah, no, sure, I don't mind. I don't, I don't mind. Like it's been, it's you know, I'm glad like you know you enjoy the character. He's a good, he's a good character to yeah to mimic. Because I mean, it's fun. Tang's Tang's voice is really just it's just an impression of somebody doing an impression of somebody else. So well, it's nice that there's, there's not many of us on SIF or the Thomas community who actually, you know, we start off doing voice acting, just playing around. There's not a lot of us who actually make something of it. Yeah, because I mean, like, I actually, oh, my, my act, my, my voice acting stuff that literally came from listening to the SIF audios, like you know, like Davies, um, James and Beetle engines and. Ryan's branch engines, mainline engines, and of course, you know, the great Sodor crossover adventure, hmm. um, which also sparked the uh, the idea of creating miniature railway adventures. So, um, so yeah, I have a lot to thank Sif, like, you know, for giving me all the, you know, the inspiration, like, you know, for doing voice acting and also pursuing my, my dream job before working for children's TV. Hmm. Mm. So, yeah. It's amazing, man. Yeah. I'm of um, Dave Wedding. His invitation is actually on my desk right here. You are? The invitation. Oh. Oh, it's my wedding. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. Ooh. <laughs> I love it. I've got, I've got the invitation to the wedding, and Dave goes, Oh, sorry, that was a mistake. Shouldn't have sent you one. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about Gav. Right. <laughs> Over here, Gav. He's playing the stag dude. Hey. Is he? <laughs> what? Awkward. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, um, so who, um, so how's the? How, how, that looks really good, Gav. How's that going? How's what? How's your project going? Looks like it's Are these little farty triangle things are pain in the ass. I found oh, right. They're including the kit, as in they're really part of the body. They're literally these teeny little tiny fire bits that you can see here. They're literally <clears throat> holding them. The pliers, like that. Pop a little bit of glue on both sides of it, and try to plug them in position there, where they're gonna go. And it's not the easiest thing to do neatly, but um, that's how I designed it. Last one now, anyway. Hmm. But the, um, these sandboxes, the these sandboxes that have been put on this 14XX seem to have a lot of glue on them. That was the problem why the other one pinged off because I have to use so much force. Uh, just be a wee second. I'm just going down to the workshop. Get some wheels here. Uh, well, how, how are we for time here? Right. Uh, we'll do. We'll have a, do another ten minutes here, and then we'll finish off for tonight. Right? Yeah, sounds good to me. All right. Back in a second, guys. Bit disappointed they couldn't finish off. My, I was actually um, hoping to achieve tonight. I've you there? Maybe. I think he was listening yeah. to Tom. Hello? Oh, you're still there? Yeah. After the stream or tomorrow, can, can we talk on the phone? I'm supposed to be Yonkos. Oh, uh, yes. You've just been busy, haven't you? Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Been, <laughs> yes. <laughs> very, very busy. And very disorganized busy. as well. A good okay. combo. I'm very what, sorry? I'm very busy. Yeah, I can imagine. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's a shame yeah. to be around in 10 minutes. Really enjoying yeah. this. But yeah, I was on. But I was going to say, let's check the comments. Anyone got any questions for us? Uh... Um, Blue is great, Graven all. 
I think, is that, I think that's how you spell your name, Grave Now. My van is turning out like OC Rose illustration reinterpretation. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to do something really dodgy. If you watch. Oh my, oh my word. Okay, and question from Blue and question from Blue Bells fifty five twenty nine, also known as the guy who's making um spark and doing an amazing job at it. Uh, what's your preferred drink for modelling? Willing to bet three out of five of you will say beer. Well, I drink Coca Cola. I I am uh, teetotal. I don't drink alcohol, um, mainly because I'm uh, I'm on a ketogenic diet. Um, so I drink. I don't have any sugar. So I don't have anything that has sugar in it. I sometimes go with low carb, which is almost keto, but at the moment, no. Uh, for me, it, it depends on what mood I'm in, actually. So, yeah, maybe I, uh, sometimes I would have, treat myself to an odd cider, but uh, most times I drink Pepsi Max. I prefer, I mean, I, I drink, I only drink socially, but yeah, I prefer to have like, I actually prefer uh, something to alcohol, which is a bit funny, but I don't know. They can even feel more, I think they're more addicted than alcohol, I don't, I don't know, or is it? I got completely it's wrong. Caffeine, eh? <laughs> it is caffeine, yeah. Uh, caffeine. Caffeine. I think me and Dave are probably the same. Oh, and now tomorrow morning uh, will be a job of respraying uh, these sandboxes and hope. Well, it shouldn't. It, it should be. A, I've got a close enough green that will match Oliver, and once it's weathered, it'll it'll blend in. But could have done without it happening. Right, I'm to make it this mm. Who's still up? We've got fifteen people watching now. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you, folks, for sticking right. around. We're glad of your ah. company. <clears throat> hey, Mr. Foster. Yes. You know what I'm going to do with these, don't you? Oh, yeah. Stick them up your nose. Hey? I'm the one who does the deep voice, mate. Don't challenge me. You sound like um, <laughs> Master Computer. The Master Computer? From Dexter. Oh, I... Oh, I was thinking more sour on us. I can see it. <laughs> these are going in the bin. What's about? What's about? What? 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 Hey? What's going in the bin? Hold on, Gav. What? what, what? <laughs> What's them? Don't you recognise them? Oh, is it buffers? No, you've got any M cup in pocket, and you've got the other sort of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> dirty, <laughs> dirty, dirty, horrible things. Oliver, 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 Oliver. Oliver. Actually, yeah, again, as I said, I get early on, like bringing talking about Wurzel gummies here. Is anybody getting? Uh, was it uh, images of Fagin coming to their mind of like Ron Moody's portrayal of Fagin after seeing the, the image of World of Gomage? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think, yeah. no, actually, yeah, I can. And Freddy Krueger, an interesting combination. Well, not Freddy Krueger, though, because he wasn't a nice man. I don't know if Freddy Krueger was the um, inspiration, but again, we had this conversation before, I think. Um, yeah. In a way, although kids do need to become experienced scary things on television just for the sake of preparing themselves, really, don't they? So maybe Freddy Krueger is the best, is, is a good example. Of doing it. I mean, I mean, sorry, what I mean is, like, for example, I, the, uh, the new Mr. Gomez looking like Freddy Krueger. I'm putting I'm putting the kit away now because the last little few detail items is a bit super fiddly and I've kind of been fiddled enough and I have nothing fiddling now so that's going to wait head up I'll just paint the inside of the Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. 
Hmm. <clears throat> well, right now, I'm just comparing my Thomas Shackle to the E1. Trying to work out. One side's obviously a bit. Is, I don't know. It's hard to say, really. Um, one side's sticking towards the right a bit more than the other, than the left sticking to. It's just not straight. It's not dead on. Yeah. And that's quite crucial for making chassis. It's got to be. Um, Go, go. All right, I'm going to talk a bit more on this. I might be doing this tonight when everything goes on, but who cares? Uh... <clears throat> I just saw Ben answer me about those bits. So I found out where they went. They're not quite even. There's little, like, little mouldings that were on the body. Well, on the sole bar. Uh, right. But it, it was that faint, you could hardly see them. Right. Hmm. I'm interested. Apart from Dave, is anybody else in, in there seeing anybody in a relationship with at all? What, sorry? Apart from Dave, is there anyone else seeing someone at the moment, or...? Awkward signs. Relationship wise, I'm, I'm probably not. That's probably your answer, Tom, with the awkward silence. No, no, I didn't, didn't hear him. I brought I didn't oh, hear okay. him. What was it? What was it again, Tom? Basically, because I was saying, because Dave's the one getting married, I was asking if anybody else in the group is anyone seeing oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a bachelor, so, you know, I haven't really been hit. I haven't been hit by Cupid's bow yet. Uh, is been this, there, been there a year and a half ago, and, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying my own company. I'm enjoying doing my own thing, and yeah, you've got to look about yourself first before you before you meet the right girl. I think. Yeah, it's just you know, that hasn't come around yet. Most most you know girls turn down me because of because of some of my interests. Oh, oh well. Yeah, well they ain't worth. Maybe, it. maybe because I just haven't really had the time. Like you know, just to to do. There's just so much happening. Girls, it tends to happen when you're not really looking for it, I find. Yeah, I'm, I'm like that. Yeah. I think if you're actively looking for it, then people can sense that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas if you're kind of just going with the flow, then... And it turns you into a... And you become a predator. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, quite, yeah. I, do, I, I do have, like, a like a girlfriend, but it's like it's not like a relationship thing. It's just, just a mate who, uh, you know, it's often meet up just to hang out, really. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah. That's how some of the, you know, not not necessarily in this case, but I think sometimes that sometimes have some, you know, relationships start out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, that's 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 more that's more more than I'm, I really want. Really, just just have a yeah, like a, a pile on. Yeah, well, that's absolutely how my um re uh, relationship with my fiance started. We were just mates first. Yeah, we actually, get together for about um, I think about a year and a half. And so um, yeah, I mean, I, I was in a relationship at that point, but you know. The point is bad, sort of. Mm. I think. Point is don't Atreus, Atreus looks put yes is married for over two years. Ah, oh, congratulations! Oh, okay. Good Oh, of course, this has been two years already. What? It's Ben Hall. He's been married yeah, two years already. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Yeah, definitely. I remember you posting it that you actually got married. I was like, oh, you can I quiet? <laughs> <laughs> How did you start organizing a wedding? Because I'm finding it quite hard. I um I didn't really so much meet someone, but I have um, been on dates in the last year or so, but they didn't really go anywhere. So I just kind of, you know, you just, I think if you can, I think if you can just, like, you know, expect it's not always going to work out and just enjoy it, have fun, like, not expect anything to come up with something, then 
Yeah, I think I think that was my problem with the last one a year and a half ago that I put too much on it and I sort of sort of you know forced myself into a situation and then sort of you know I was the one who got hurt sort of thing and taking yeah. a bit of time to get over that and um, I'm saying, I'm sort of healing from that at the moment. So that's why I don't want to meet anyone because I don't think I'm in the right place yet. Won't yeah. be fair on anybody. There's no rush. There's no rush. Really building. I'm not oh, into no rush, but I'm 34. I'm still bloody by myself, and I'm a bit pissed off about it. So, depends on perspective. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to be 27 in July. So, oh, you youngster, you. <laughs> yes. It's all right, Gab. You've always got your Percy impression. <laughs> That's going to be the next. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm past the age when my parents got married, so and they're still together like 30 years on. So. Okay, uh, just a picture to show if anybody's interested. Can I have the yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yep, you're on camera now. So that's how uh, that's how Oliver is uh, looking at the moment. Um, oh, shit. Hold on. Let me just sort my bit out of my end. Yep, that's how that's how I'm sort of looking now. Uh, the sandboxes are off. I need to just respray. I'm going to respray both of them. Move them back, put them back midway through the splasher. Sorry. But there he is. Oliver! Nice, Oliver! That's perfect, man. Love it. Yeah, definitely. And um, and Davey is uh, he's Dak. So he's looking at the yeah, moment. Cleaned up with silver handrails at the moment. Oh, now then, Becky Boos. Oh, ducky, 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 ducky. Oh, ducky, oh, ducky, oh, ducky, ducky. Um, <laughs> and then we've got a nice bit of tool. tool, tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good oh, you don't sound very well. <laughs> sick, yeah, but yeah, that's uh, that's how ducks looking. And I uh, had a few discussions with a few people, Mike and, uh, and Gav and a few others. Um, yeah. I've, put, I've put auto gear onto... Um, Onto, onto Duck, even though 57XX has never got auto gear, we know from the uh, Island of Sodor book that uh, it was an auto service that Duck and Oliver provided, so it would make sense. Well, some, some, I've seen some 57XX engines having auto gear fitted. I've wow. not. Um, I've not seen any that ever got it. Um, <coughs> I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't know if this is you know proof or not proof of it at all. But it's like a British Railways history on brand signs video documentary thing I saw, which shows some auto trains being operated. But, yeah, it, it tended to be sixty four XXs and um, and right. fourteen XXs were auto fitted. But again, you know, I, I it's easy thing. For for so a top and hack to uh, fit onto uh, onto his locos. So um, mm. yeah, this is all uh, good. Oh, I'll just quickly show this. This is a um, this was on my old Lehman Road layer. I've got a line of them, and I weathered them, and I'm quite pleased with yeah. them. Well, these are going to be on the backdrop to me Tidmouth yards. Nice. Yeah, I should drive. I should drive them dirty. Page of camera set. Uh, hang on, sir. hang on, sir. Yep, you're on camera now. I just want to show what I don't know. Same sort of thing, a bit different. It was just like a resin Star Trek thing, but I painted it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Right, okay, guys. I think we're going to have to uh, finish up now on Modeler's Corner because uh, it's getting a bit late night. Oh, so, look at the time, ten to eleven. I know. Right, <laughs> let's uh, put your t gentlemen put your tools down now. Right. Not, not, not that oh, one, you no. dirty boy. Not finished. <laughs> The stream is coming to an end now. Let's so let's so let's see, let's have a look over the work we've had here. So, uh, Gavin, we'll go with you first. Yeah, one sec. Okay. Yeah, language. I've put all the other bits in there. Yep. Because I'm going to do it later. We've got okay. Really super fiddly bits left. So this might not be completely perfectly correct. There might be some balls up, some mistakes, but I've kind of persevered and done the best I can. That looks really good. Very nice. That's nice work, mate. Looks really nice indeed, there. Oh, Tom good. Foster, let's have a look at your work. Okay, dokie. So we've um, so yeah, so you so Oliver's now pretty much tea cutted with all the tea cut work on him. Um, and I've got my couplings, uh, my couplings done. Um, 
And what I didn't get around to doing, what I'm going to do, is this is a white metal kit of an LMS fan. Uh, I'm going to take the LMS off at some point and put NW from Northwestern. Awesome. And Tom Biddle, how are we getting on to your end? Well, it's not been very successful, to be honest. I mean, um, uh, no worries. this thing's not properly, well, as well as it could have been. And I found out some things wrong with the wheels that I hoped. Um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of um, tweaking to do still. And I, I was hoping to have something a bit more exciting to show for the, for the stream. Because I know that a lot of people don't get it. You know, there's a lot of modelers who don't get to do much with grass or metal things. I'm always happy to answer any questions about it. But yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, well, so the um, as far as I know, the CAD does solder together quite well. But I keep making the pieces either the wrong size or they don't. They don't. It doesn't make it. Doesn't make the chassis square enough. And the wheels run against each other, so I've got, I've got to sort that as well. And hopefully by next time this will be this will be finished. But yeah. Okay. And uh, from my end. And also, I also broke the body. Look. Ah. Ah, bugger. Because I put this. So I thought I'd fix that as well. <coughs> no worries. <laughs> and. Uh, Let's see. Uh, yeah, for my end, uh, I've pretty much nearly got the kit all done here. I'm going to repaint it again here. Uh, I've got the roof and all on. I'll put some like three link couplings on just to test to see how it looks here. So, yeah, I'll give it another repaint here. I've got the chassis on it there. So, it's it's not it's not like a proper running loco model there, but it's mostly going to be like, you know, uh, a static model really because it's not going to be seen that much. But, um, I like it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad turn out there. So I'll uh, need to get some buffers and all, proper some buff, proper buffers fitted on. Get repainted again here and add a few more detail bits, including the NW on the sides, and that will probably get ready to go. So for for brass engines. So, and uh, also for our second guest here, we have Davey. Um, yes, your icon looks lovely. Good turn out. <laughs> good turn out. Right, right, you you done very yep. good work. You done very good work on that icon. Fantastic. Oh, shit, mate. Yeah. Very good indeed there. So. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So that uh, that that'll, that'll conclude us now for Modelers Corner. Sorry, guys, for the uh, the 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 half hour delay from the very start. Was, again, this is just due to um, some software that we were trying to try out here to make things a bit more easier for us here. But with um, we made up for it. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll, we'll try and make it. We'll try and get it fixed again here. The, the the issue that we had there was just like everybody was echoing, apart from myself. So I don't know what what was causing it there. So. Um, yeah, we'll we'll get we'll tr I'll try and get that fixed at, at uh, during the week, and uh, hopefully next time it'll be working fine. Um, comment from, sorry, comment, comment from Killian Keen, Tom Biddle, you're one less away from being Voldemort. Yes, that was my nickname at school. <laughs> dear, dear. Well, thank you for having me, Mike. It's been great. Yes, thank you, Tom, for coming along, and also thank you, Davy, for for coming along as well, because we didn't we didn't we didn't expect you to come along. Yeah, I mean, uh, genuinely, thanks for inviting me. It was um, yes, lovely yeah. to have you on here, man. It definitely, it definitely is. Yeah. Big surprise as well. Like. Yeah, this might yeah. sound a bit corny, but it's good to hear your voice again. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, cheers, mate. No, it's been really good to yeah chat to people that well, obviously yeah, bit of I see all the time, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, the other three we obviously haven't spoken to you in ages so yeah because i mean i think the last time we spoke like you know it was just through i think you were visiting gavin there he just says like hey do you want to call mike and i was like yeah so well, last yeah, time we saw yeah. each other davy was that was it york 2010 i know man it's crazy nine years ago let me oh, yeah. <laughs> that was uh 2010 that was the year you, you uh convinced me to get onto saf actually after after like the model all the other model forms were slowly dying out yeah, goodness me. I mean, and now oh. um, that was uh, Facebook's changed things and Twitter as well. And uh, yeah, I'll we'll just let's hope the future goes okay. So, yeah, just to kind of discreet say uh, on Twitter, um, because you mentioned about Dr. Tank Engine, which is my old username, but on Twitter, I am a uh, Tom at RWS models. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not under that name anymore. No worries, no worries, mate. So thank you, thank you everyone here for tuning into Modeler's Corner. Uh, hopefully we'll get another stream up maybe in the next two weeks. Uh, Fortnite there because I think it's I think it works better if we do this every fortnight now. So mm. it gets us all prepped and all ready out there. So 
yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, a uh, couple of weeks in, and we'll see who we'll have next time on the Modelers Corner. So thank you much, guys, and thank you to our guests and all and fellow comrades for joining in. Yeah, see you next time. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.